Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Members of Parliament, good morning. I'm very humbled to stand before you this morning. My name is Shogo Richard Mlozi. I am a candidate member of parliament in the East African Regressive Assembly. I'm a seasoned expert in the tourism industry. I'm a, I'm a senior lecturer and I've had the opportunity to serve in various boards. Right Honorable Speaker and members, given opportunity to serve in this position, I'll do my best to put the interest of our nation before everything. Right, Honorable Speaker and members, to talk to you about a number of areas that I'd like to put my interest in. The first area is business opportunities and investment. The existence of East African community has posed a very competitive environment for doing business. East Africa has a lot of potential from agriculture, mining, energy, infrastructure, and tourism investment opportunities. The focus here is on the areas where other partner states have direct stake. From a business perspective, all businesses are linked to tourism industry, foreign direct investment, and shared trading and services. Right, Honorable Speaker and members, I am very inspired and moved by Her Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan. Our President noble work in reviving our economy and opening up our economy to foreign and local direct investment through the Royal Tour program. These initiatives have had a very huge impact to our economy and has positioned Tanzania as a very competitive destination. The question is, how do we make that competitiveness sustainable? Also, the question is, how do people of Tanzania take advantage of those opportunities within the East African region? Honorable Speaker, given an opportunity to serve in this position, I will make sure we work on complementary cooperation and protection of our national interest. Another area that I would like to champion is the area of women empowerment. Honorable Speaker and members. Dr. Shogo, uh, your time is up and I think the members have already heard you. Are there any contestants? Okay, uh, there is a hand from Honorable Kingu. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker, to give me this opportunity to ask one, just one question to my sister, Shogo. Honorable Speaker, I'm a little bit curious that uh, Madam candidate is one of the CEO of one of the most competent institution in our country. I'm just asking what value will she add when we endorse her today to become the representative of Tanzania to the East African Legislative Assembly. Thank you so much. You got one minute to respond to the question. Right, Honorable Speaker, I'd like to thank you, Honorable Kingu, for a very good question. First of all, I'm very grateful to have served as the CEO for five years. Five years is a good number. This is the time for me to grow, and this is the direction I've chosen to grow. But as a CEO also, I've been exposed to a number of opportunities that have given me different leaderships, have different techniques on how they're going to understand and also support you in the implementation of that. implementation of that vision. In doing so, you need to have the lobbying skills, the negotiation skills, and networking skills. That's not only the case. As the CEO, you always have to make decisions, decisions which are tough. In order to make this decision, you need to be a critical thinker and to make a detailed analysis before you make any decision. 
Thank you so much. The CEO have had an opportunity to be in different platform with different executives and diplomats. That has given me a sense of deep self-awareness to know what to say, when to okay. say, and how to say it. Dr. Shogo, that's enough. Thank you so much. You. Uh, members, I don't see any other hands, so there are no more questions. So thank you so much uh, for the explanation you have given, and I'm sure the members of parliament thank have you, understood. Thank you, and please vote for me. Santeni sana waheshimiwa katibu mwingine ndugu Sonia Juma Magogo Katibu Rudia si kama wamesikia Naomba eletwe ndugu Sonia Juma Magogo Sonia Yuma Magogo, you're welcome to the Parliament of Tanzania, who are uh, the voters in this case, but you're a candidate for the IALA um, membership. So you will be given three minutes to ask for votes from the members, and also the members will have an opportunity to ask you questions should they have any. Please. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable. Deputy Speaker, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Members of Parliament, good morning. Good morning. In front of you is Sonia Yuma Magogo, contesting for the post in East Africa Legislative Assembly. Academically, I have a master's degree in business administration from Mzumbe University. I also have postgraduate diploma in management of foreign relations from Center of Foreign Relations, Kurasini. I also have an advanced diploma in business administration and management from CBE. I was a member of parliament, special seats, from 2015 up to 2020. And currently, I am a principal compliance officer from NSSF. With that short introduction, honorable members of parliament, I stand in front of you to ask for your vote, to ask for your permission. I am capable and I'm ready to represent my country in that regional integration. I am a trained diplomat. I will bring back positive results to our country. Thank you very much. Um, thank you so much. I think the members of parliament have heard you. I don't see any members standing um, or raising their hands. So thank you so much, uh, Sonia Magog. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah Rabuspik. You're free to leave now. Thank you. Thank you. Katibu anayefuata Ndugu Queen Julie Chilugembe
queen this side yes please okay um queen juliet Ma lugembe you're welcome to the house and before you are the members of parliament who are likely to vote for you if they are convinced with what you're going to tell them so you you have three minutes to convince them to vote for you. Why do you want to become a member of the East Africa Legislative Assembly? Honorable Speaker, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Member of the Parliament, greetings of the day. My name is Queen Juliet William Lugembe, a Tanzanian who is ready and willingly to represent the country in East Africa Legislative Assembly and hopefully my CV is already circulated for, to you all. And I'm a degree holder of ethics and development studies. Working with the community, it's my ambition that I want to look forward to. Coming to this task is to work together with all the Tanzanian communicate and having one team that can represent the country in East Africa Legislative Assembly. As a Tanzanian with thirsty of progress and development, I would like to represent my country to the East Africa Legislative Assembly as a true member of Tanzania with a spirit to work with the nation and my country to go together with all what is said for our country and start together as one for the progress of our country. But also my vision is to work in both aspects, economically, politically, socially, and even in cultural integration so that same issues, along with to improve the life of our citizen in different aspects, having the peace, securing the freedom of our country, and also work in terms of agriculture and trading in our country to improve in all aspects, and if possible to have a taxi exemption of all the cities, I mean, the members of the East African community country, countries that are in the East African Legislative Assembly to work together and have the same team for the growth of all together and having that wide and probably to go further for our nation and fight together for the benefits of our country without care. from or which part that we are coming from but we are all having to stand as one for the betterness of our country our future and the next generation that we are fighting for to go together and having one team and one force for the development of our country thank you a member of East Africa Legislative Assembly representing our country. Therefore, it is my mission to stand on my feet to serve our country and the East Africa community by representing the EAC views at large, including the following to mention but a few. Firstly, strengthening common markets and political stability among the East African countries. Secondly, stabilization of single customs administration system, for example, harbors, ports, industries, all of these should be put together so that to remove the separation or segregation between one country and another. Although I have 28 years old, a person with disability, yet I believe that I am the right person to fit to this position. 
Dear honorable members, dear honorable members, I kindly request for your votes so that I become a country representative in East Africa Legislative Assembly. Thank you so much. May God be with us always. Okay, thank you so much, Zainab Ham Abdul. I don't see any member raising to ask you questions. I believe they have understood you. Yeah. You got 30 seconds to wind up and then you may take your leave. 30 seconds, if you have anything to say, then you can go. Members of parliament don't have any questions. Okay. I again requesting humbling for your votes, honorable member. You may now go, you may take your leave, thank you. Thank you. Mwishimu wa bunge tunaelekea kwenye kundi lingine Wagombea uh, sita wa wanawake wamesha maliza Na kati yao sita utachagua watatu Utapiga kura tatu Tunaelekea sasa kundi B Kundi la wagombea wa Zanzibar Katibu Dr. Abdullah Hasnu Makame Dr. Makame, you're welcome to the Parliament of Tanzania. Um, and before you are the voters, in the event they are convinced with what you're going to say, which you have th only three minutes to express yourself, but yeah, ask for the votes from them, since you have indicated interest in going to represent Tanzania to the East Africa Legislative Assembly. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker for giving me the opportunity to address uh, this August House and request for my votes. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I'd like to request your indulgence just for a few seconds to greet uh, the August House in Kiswahili. And uh, the greeting is to tell the, to greet the Honorable Members of this August House. Shikamoni waishimiwa bunge. Shikamoni. Mwishimiwa bunge, shikamoni. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Having said that, Mrs. M M Madam Speaker, <clears throat> I am a member of the East African Legislative Assembly who was very fortunate to be elected by this August House in 2017. So coming here for the second time is an opportunity to me, a privilege which many people did not receive, Mrs. M Madam Speaker. So I'm very thankful to your house. I'm thankful to my party, Chama Chama Pinduzi, who endows in me with uh, majority votes. Madam Speaker, during my tenure as a member of the East African Legislative Assembly, I served as the chairperson of the Tanzanian chapter for the first two and a half years, and subsequently I served as the, um, and which I'm continuing to serve as the chairperson of the Committee on Agriculture, Tourism, and Environment and Natural Resources. Uh, these these uh, tasks are uh, additional ass uh, assignments that were given to me by my colleagues because uh, they thought I could uh, deliver some more work, additional work, on, on behalf of them. So I did that work, and I'm quite sure, Madam Speaker, you never received any complaints. But also, uh, during the tenure in the, in, the, in the East African Legislative Assembly, we did some work. We did uh, pass some bills. We did pass some... Uh, 
uh, make some resolutions, but more also we, we have some social activities, maybe uh, in terms of games. And you know that, uh, Madam Speaker, we participate. Thank you in so much. They have they have heard you. They have heard you. And I'm not seeing any member raising up to ask questions. So I believe they have understood you. Thirty seconds. Where? I don't see any hand. Okay, Honorable Abdallah Mwini. Thank, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. As, as a, Dr. Makame is a second termer, I didn't want to leave him. Let him leave before he can answer a few questions. Uh, Dr. Makame, could you please uh, explain to this August Assembly what would you say are the fundamental challenges that you have faced during your first term of office and what needs to be done to ensure that those challenges are alleviated? I thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Wait Honorable. Wait a second. You have to be called before you start speaking. Uh, Dr. Makame, please respond to the question. Thank, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, this is a question uh, asked to me by a member emeritus of the East African Legislative Assembly. He served for 10 years there. And uh, it's, a, it's a very good question, I would say, uh, because uh, in life, you don't, you, you don't live without challenges. So we have some challenges. And uh, specifically, we had some challenges with regards to the integration of ESC. And uh, we are looking at creating an environment that would uh, enable the participation and the functioning of the private sector. That is a general issue, because we are seeing uh, the challenges in business. Much as uh, the business people are doing business, but there are issues of non-tariff barriers. That's a general issue in the ESC. But in terms of us, also, Mr. Madam Speaker, with our, the, the, the chapter, we need to have um, closer, uh, closer links with the National Assembly. I'm not saying that we don't have, but uh, we'd like to improve the, the links with the National Assembly so that uh, we have uh, greater and for greater cooperation and report more, more frequently. That's, uh, I think, the short response. Thank you so much. And the members, I think they have understood you. 30 seconds to wind up. Uh, thank you much, Madam Speaker. Now, uh, having said what I have said, the only thing which is remaining is to request uh, your August House through you, Madam Speaker, but the members as well, and your own vote, Madam Speaker, the vote of the Right Honourable Prime Minister and uh, my former uh, Minister of uh, Foreign, Honourable Dr. Ndubaru. And all members, uh, you know, because this, uh, he, he groomed us uh, while we, we were in the ESC. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you so much. You may now take your leave. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Katibu anayefuata Dugu Machano Ali Machano Machano Ali Machano, before you are the voters, and in the event they are convinced with what you're going to say, they'll vote for you. So you're given a ch uh, three minutes to uh, prove yourself to the members why they should vote for you. Please. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker of the Parliament of the United Republic of Tanzania, Your Excellency Dr. Tulia Axon, Your Ex Honorable Deputy Speaker of the glorious parliament of the United Republic of Tanzania, Your Excellency Musa Azan Zungu, Honorable Prime Minister of the United Republic of Tanzania, Your Excellency Majaliwa Kasim Majaliwa, Honorable Members of the Parliament, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum. 
the Honorable Speaker, Member of the Parliament, in front of you is Mr. Machano, Ali Machano. I'm 34 years old. Currently, I'm Lego Officer, Minister of Blue Economy and Fisheries of the Revolutionary Government of Zanzibar. I'm working at Pemba Main Office. The Honorable Speaker, I'm here in front of you because I'm, I'm running for the member of East Africa Legislative Assembly. Honorable Speaker, I have made decision to construct this post because I want to represent my country in East Africa Legislative Assembly. I have in respect to that, I want to air out various opportunities available in our country to the other East African member states. In addition to that, I want to strengthen the historical relationship between Tanzania and other East African member states. Honorable Speaker and Member of the Parliament, I know the respect and position of our country in East Africa, Africa, and the world at large. I also know the respect and seriousness of the post I'm contesting for. And finally, I know the respect of this organ, this, the glorious parliament of the United Republic of Tanzania. I humbly and respectively, and respectively promise you that I will never let you down. Please vote for me. Please invest, Honorable Speaker and dear members of the parliament, I kindly I kindly request you, invest your trust to me. I will never let you down. I will never, ever, forever spoil the image of our country. Honorable Speaker, please, I ask you for your vote. Honorable Prime Minister, I honestly ask you for your vote. Honorable members from, this, from various constituencies, from Zanzibar, Maryland, Tanzania, Maryland, and Zanzibar, I'm asking for your vote. Honorable Thank members so of this much. parliament, from, Thank you so much. from special seats, CCM and others, I kindly request for your vote. Thank you so I much, Mr. Machano. Thank, Thank, you you so Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The members have already heard you, and I am not seeing any member raising up to ask you questions. And since you have already requested for the votes, you can use 30 seconds to wind up, and then you can leave. 30 seconds to wind up. Uh, Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. Being back to the respective country, I request for your vote. I confidently promise you that. You will never, I confidently promise you that. You will never regret your decision you are going to make. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Katibu anayefuata Rubu Anderson Ndambo Mr. Anderson Emmanuel Ndambo, you're welcome to the Parliament of Tanzania. And before you are the members of Parliament who are going to vote for you when they are convinced that you can represent the country well at the East Africa Legislative Assembly. You have got three minutes to prove yourself to the members. Please. Thank you, Honorable Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister. And thank you, Honorable Members of this Parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, Good morning. First of all, I would love to express my deep, sincere gratitude for me being part of this election process. As for me, this reflects the ideas of youth empowerment, deepening and widening democracy values in this country. Honorable members, tracing back the history of East African community since 1948 until 2000, when the College East African Committee was re-established, through its falls and rise, there is one great lesson we got, that economy was the major primary reason for the establishment of East African community, and probably most in the rest of the regional integration around the world. And this is because, members, most countries, especially in Africa, have been struggling to overcome the challenges of small market, 
lack of technology, scarcity of resources, and probably in the modern world, the new trend of international aid which prefer mostly the regional development project instead of individual state development projects. Meanwhile, members, East African population has been projected by international monetary organizations will be dwelling in East Africa. On the ground, AEC members are struggling while facing the high increased rate of unemployment, which mostly affecting the young people who are projected who are projected to reach it to 70% by 2025. The above analysis suggests something very concisely that if we keep and continue thinking as an individual state rather than a regional bloc on addressing issues affecting our people, then we should be prepared for the worst to come. I know, members, we have issues in politics, political intra conflict between member states, likely Uganda versus Rwanda, Rwanda versus DRC Congo. We have a very huge gap of democracy standard values in East African members that affect the unification and jeopardizing the dream of East African Federation. And that affect the performance and implementation of protocols on place we have currently and pushing trade, 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 I mean, trade cooperation between members. Honorable members, I understand Ambo. I have been so much. Be back. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, the members of parliament have heard you, and I'm not seeing anybody raising to ask you questions. Oh, there's a question just uh, behind you. Honorable um, Nusrat Hanja. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, uh, Mr. Henderson, I remember back in high school when you were the speaker of the student government in Benjamin Mkapa, and I was the vice president of Benjamin Mkapa uh, student government. What are you telling your fellow youth when you become a member of uh, East African Legislative Assembly? How are, they gonna, uh, how are they going to benefit from you as a young person being a member of East African Legislative Assembly? Thank you. Okay, you got one minute to respond to the question. Thank you, Madam Nusrat Hanje, for the very great question. I understand the statistic shows the population of East Africa, the more we go, youth are constituting to 70% of the entire population. It means, it also I believe, this is a very huge platform that will give me a chance to explore and push the agenda that affect the development of youth agendas that will affect it in a different aspect, economically and socially and political angles. Thank you. Thank you so much. There are no more questions, so 30 seconds to wind up, and then you may go. Again, honorable members, Anna Sondambo, my name, I believe I can be the right person, I've got capabilities, to protect and promote the interest of our country for the development of East Africa. Please, I'm asking you again to vote and elect me to be a country representative to the East African Eastern Assembly. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You may take your leave now. You may go. Thank you so much. Katibu Anaifuata. Dugu Husna Muhammad Abdallah. Husna Muhammad Ms. Husna Muhammad Abdallah, you're welcome to the House. Whose members are going to vote for you when they're convinced with what you're going to say? So you're given three minutes to convince the members why they should vote for you to be a country's representative to the East Africa Legislative Assembly. Please. Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable dear members of parliament, as I introduced by Madam Speaker, 
My name is Husna Muhammad Abdalla. I'm 39 years old. I am degree holder of procurement and supply management. I'm standing here as a candidate of East Africa Legislative Assembly. As we know that East Africa Legislative Assembly is the one among the organ of East Africa community which faced by some challenges and so we have to select the smart person who have the ability to solve that challenges and I ensure you that I am a smart. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, um, because of the time, I want to explain more about these challenges because I have the great idea that I'm going to establish when give me the chance to be a member of East Africa a Legislative Assembly member. It's about free market. Honorable, honorable Speaker, this time, uh, I think time is enough for Africans to send our money abroad unless they are manufacturers. We have to establish our trade center in our zone right now. We have the good location, uh, unlike, unlike West Africa. East Africa can receive directly from, directly from manufacturers. So we have good location, we have the port, we have the opportunity to control the business within all Central Africa countries and East Africa countries and almost of the countries among a whole Africa continent. Thank you so much, Husna. Thank you. The members of parliament have heard you and I'm not seeing anybody raising to ask you questions. So you've got 30 seconds to wind up and then you can leave. You're given 30 seconds to wind up and then you can go. Thank you so much. I'm asking you kindly your vote for Husna Muhammad Abdallah. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. You may now go. Thank, thank you. you. Katibu Anaifuata. Engineer Muhammad Habib Mnya. You're welcome to the Parliament of the United Republic of Tanzania. And before you are the voters, who, if they are convinced, they'll vote for you. So you're given three minutes to convince them why they should vote for you. Please. Uh, right Honorable Madam Speaker, uh, Right Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Members, of this August House, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Engineer Mnya. At the moment, I'm a, Iala, I'm, for, I'm a member of IALA 4, who is completing my tenure by 17th December this year. I stand before you here humbly to ask for your vote. I'm contesting for the second time for the reason, for the two main reasons. One, that uh, if you elect me to be there for the second time, I'll be increasing the institutional memory from the members of the United Republic. But secondly, in this integration, the two remaining pillars are very tough ones, which are the monetary union 
and uh, political federation. From my experience, we really need political tolerance and experience for these two remaining pillars. I therefore requesting your vote in order that I can be the one of the members from United Republic. Honorable Madam Speaker, the system which has been introduced this, this time of uh, being allocated with the group of uh, ruling party somehow is a new one. I would like to declare openly that if the voting arrangement is interfering with my colleague of Zanzibar vote of CCM, don't vote for me. But if the voting arrangement is enabling us or enabling you that uh, the one slot given to the opposition, then please vote for me. Honorable Madam Speaker, I wish to join IALA 5 in order that I'll be one, I'll be among the one who will be um, who will be helping the United Republic because really in order to save the treaty. Thank you so much. The we members of Parliament have heard you. Thank you so much. And I'm not seeing any member of Parliament raising up to ask questions. Okay, there's one. There are actually two questions. So we will start with Professor Sospita Mhongo. Uh, good morning, candidate Mnya. You are one of the senior members of Parliament in the community. The world is creeping into recession. How would you use the African community as one of the economic vehicles to take Tanzania out of this untold economic recession? Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable. Wait a second. You, you wait until you're called. That's when you start responding. Thank so, you. Mia, please respond to the question. Thank you. Uh, if I understood very well your question, that uh, in IALA, there is this uh, uh, EPA, we have this uh, tripartite, whereby all economic issues are under special discussion in cooperation with all members of partner states. So what we will agree that will be for the benefit of Tanzania. At the moment, only Rwanda and Kenya have signed. But still, there are some problems in order that we can sign all of us, all partner states, and then that we can benefit from EU. Thank you so much. There is a second question from Honorable Emmanuel Mokasaka. Thank you. Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to ask Honorable Engineer Mohamed Mnya, one of the key elements to convince someone to vote for you is public relations. In this aspect, since you have been elected last time, can you convince any, any of these public relations concerning how you, you have uh, achieved in your work convincing us so that we can give you another chance to prevent us in ERA. Okay, Mnya, yeah, you're given a chance to respond. One minute. Yeah, as of Yala, but also under collaboration of our foreign affairs. So we normally do things uh, in, a, in a teamwork. So the whole teamwork of Tanzania, if there is something which, is a, which needs to be done, 
we normally uh, convince each other, we discuss together, and then we go for what we have agreed upon. Thank you so much. Uh, that was the... <laughs> There's another question from Honorable Joseph Kashek Umsikuma. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Forgive me this chance. Ms. Amnia, I want to ask you one question. Where are you? For, what did you do? What did you do for the last five years? I think you have heard his question. Okay, honorable members, honorable members, please hold on. Mnya, uh, did you hear his question? Did you hear his question? Did you hear his question? No, madam. Okay, members of parliament, please come down. Let's hear uh, honorable Mskuma. What speaking. did you do for last five years? Okay, so, uh, okay, I'll help you, I'll help you. He's asking, he's asking, what did you do for the past five years? That's his question. Okay, you're still showing signs that you haven't heard. Did you hear me? Can you help okay, me members of parliament, let's give him a chance to respond. Members of parliament, because let's he... give him a chance to respond. Okay, let me repeat his question. Please listen to me. He's asking, what did you do for the past five years? That okay, is his question. thank you very much. Well, for the past five years, the main work of the legislative assembly, there are works in committees, they are work in the assembly. We have passed a lot of bills. We have, do, we have done a lot of oversight. There are a lot of things. Even I have passed some motions. So there are a lot which I have done for the last five years. And all other things, it depends on, uh, on the group of, of other colleagues. There was one very crucial bill from uh, one member of the Kenya, private bill, whereby we managed to stop, because it was a very bad bill from our, our country, economically, it would destroy our uh, customs. So we, one of the things which we denied together, those are the things which we did. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, there are no more questions. Now you're given 30 seconds to wind up. Then you may leave. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I'm standing before here humbly to ask for a vote. But I'm repeating again, if those votes are interfering with my colleague vote of Sisi and Zanzibar, don't draw vote for me. But if those, if those votes are enabling you to vote for the one slot of opposition, please vote for me. I thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. You may take your leave now. Katibu wa Shimwa Bunge tunaelekea kundi la tatu. Kundi la wagombea wa vyama vya walio wachache bungeni. Na hapa tunao watatu. Katibu ndugu Ado Shaibu Ado. Shaibu Ado, you're welcome to the Parliament of Tanzania and before you are the members of Parliament who 
you are standing there to convince them so that they vote for you to represent the country to the East Africa Legislative Assembly. And in that respect, you're given three minutes to do just that. Please. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members of the Parliament, I salute you in the name and the spirit of the United Republic of Tanzania. And you know what to respond. As introduced, my name is Ado Shaibu Ado. I am humbly standing before you, honorable members, to kindly request for your votes so that I can represent our beloved country, Tanzania, in the East African Legislative Assembly. Honorable Speaker, honorable members, before I proceed, please allow me to express my pleasure and the delight for stepping foot in this honorable parliament, who is the speaker, one of the final legal minds in Tanzania, Honorable Turia Axon Mwansasu, was, she was one of my lecturers at the University of Dar es Salaam, where I graduated with a Bachelor of Laws. While at the University of Dar es Salaam, I remember Professor Paramagamba Kabudi, who is also a member to this house, together with Dr. Gaston Kennedy, who is serving us at the United Nations, taught us a new course called the East African Community Law. Its main objective was to prepare Tanzanian lawyers like myself to serve competently in the organs of the East African community, such as the East African Legislative Assembly, the East African Court of Justice, and as a Secretariat. It therefore follows Ado Shaibu is academically prepared to serve for the role. Apart from my academic background, the Honorable Speaker, Ado Shaibu is a true believer in Pan-Africanism. And I'm very happy, I'm very happy that Dr. Bashiru Ari Kakulwa <laughs> is also a member to this house. He can testify that we worked together, we volunteered together, a decade ago, we volunteered together at the Mwarim Nyerere Professorial Chair in Pan-African Studies. And we proudly sang, we proudly sang, Africa Moja, Africa Hulu. I volunteered, served and dedicated my time in various Pan-African movements and platforms in East Africa and elsewhere in Africa. In, uh, Thank elsewhere you so in much, Ado. Uh, My um, promise, if elected, is twofold. One, I second. promise that I will protect and defend the interests Ado, of Tanzania. Ado Shaibu, the speaker is calling you. Wait a second. Thank you. The members have heard you. Thank now you. they'll have a chance to ask you questions, if Thank they you. have any. And I'm seeing three members who have just rose up. So I'll start with Constantine John Kanyasu. I, I thank you, Madam Speaker. Tanzania is the second largest country in East Africa, uh, with the new coming in of DRC Congo. It is strategically located with uh, potential uh, competitive advantages. I want to know what are you pushing, what are your agenda to push in East Africa to make Tanzania great? Thank you. Mr. Ado Shaibu Ado, you're given one minute to respond to a member's question. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, the main sector of economy in Tanzania is the agriculture. And therefore, my push will be to provide and to look for market for agriculture products from Tanzania. We have a lot of markets in East Africa. So my priority will be market for agricultural products. Thank you. 
Honorable Mwanaisha Ulenge. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, my question to uh, Ado Shaibu is as follows. Uh, the legal and in institutional framework of AAC is not in line with uh, our national one. Do you agree with that? And if it is yes, uh, as a member of IALA, how are you coming to make sure Tanzania will harmonize at the same time we benefit with that? Mr. Ado Shaibu, did you that understand well. his question? I have not heard that well. Please repeat yourself. Okay, I have Honorable said Mwana the Isola. legal and institutional framework of EAC uh, is not in line with our national. Do you agree? And if it is yes, uh, as a member of IALA, how are you going to make sure Tanzania will harmonize and at the same time we benefit? Thank you. Honorable Speaker. Wait, wait. You have to be called before you speak. Now you have a chance to respond to her question. Honorable Speaker, as said before, I've been taught in East African laws. The East African community operates under international law. It has, it has its legal framework and administrative framework. Legally, we have the treaty and we have protocols. Administratively, we have organs. We have organs in the East African community. So the way I see it, there is a correlation between the legal and the administrative framework of the community and the linkedness with the framework of the nation. For instance, one example, one example, one example. There is a direct link between the East African Legislative Assembly and this house. There is a link. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Honorable Jessica Kishore. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Mr. Candidate, the EU has criticized the construction of uh, Uganda-Tanzania pipeline project. And we know that in East Africa, this is a big project. What is your position on this? Uh, I am sorry, members. I'm going to rule that out as a question for the candidate. So I will let another member speak, because that's, that will be the third question. So, Honorable Yuma, I think. I thank you very much, the Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. I have one, I would like to pose one question to the Honorable Contestant. At times there occur contradiction between the jurisdictions of the member states and the ambience of the law establishing East African Legislative Assembly. When that happens, what would be your useful wisdom? Come again? Uh, I don't see a property. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't see um, a property. Okay. No problem. Just hold on. Uh, can you please I'm repeat, repeat the yourself? Question. I would like to pose one question to the Honorable Contestant. Honorable Speaker, at times there occur contradictions between the jurisdictions of the member states and the ambience of the East African Legislative, Legislative Assembly law. When that happens, and as a seasoned lawyer, what is your what's my, what, wisdom? When that happens, what is your wisdom? Okay, have you understood it? Have I'm you understood this? I'm not sure if I got the question properly. Okay, wait, wait a second. Since you yeah. said I was your teacher, I'm going to explain what he's asking. Yes. He's asking okay. when there are contradictions, and I think because we are used to teaching by examples, if there are contradictions between what this house wants and what the East Africa Legislative Assembly wants, in your wisdom, what are you going to do? Tanzania, Tanzania is a sovereign state. When the interest of Tanzania conflicts with the issues in the East African community, my duty will be to stand and protect 
for the interest of Tanzania. That will be my wisdom. That's why, that's why, that's why in my motto, I said it categorically, our country first. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So, because you have been asked three questions already, I'll give you 30 seconds to wind up, then you can go. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of the Parliament, I humbly, with profound humility, request for your votes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Adda Shaibu. You may now take your leave. Thank you so much. Katibu anayefuata. Yafar Saidi Mneke. Anayefuata ni ndugu Jafar Saidi Mneke. Mr. Jafar Saeed Mneke, you are welcome to the House. And before you are the members of Parliament who are likely to vote for you if they are convinced with what you're going to do for the position that you're vying. And you're given three minutes to convince them, please. Okay. Honorable members, honorable members, let's listen to the candidate, please. Honorable Speaker, Dr. Tulia Axon, the Honorable Prime Minister Kasi Majaliwa Majaliwa, the Honorable Members of Parliament, uh, my name is Mneke Jafar Saidi, a member and a leader of the Civic United Front Kafu Chama Chonanchi, a director of foreign affairs policy in the parliament of the Civic United Front. Also, I am a deputy chairman of a technical committee of the TCD, Tanzania Center for Democracy. Honorable Speaker, please allow me to thank Her Excellency Head of the State, Imam Samia Suluhu Hassani, for her good governance and the wonderful achievement in a very short time of his, her leadership. Honorable Speaker, also allow me in a precise way to thank Almighty God who gave me this opportunity to be here in front of you today. Without God, I couldn't be here this morning. Honorable Speaker, I'm a candidate of Oyala. I humbly request you to vote for me. If you will vote for me to be a member of Oyala, I'm going to capitalize on three issues. The first issue which I'm Thank you so much. Uh, the bell has rung already. I'm going to let members who have questions, and I don't see any raising, so it means they have all understood you. And now you're given 30 seconds to wind up, then you can go. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Honorable members of parliament, the first issue I'm going to deal with is the national agenda. I'm going to send it for national agenda. The second one I'm going to 
to send for cooperation, economic cooperation in the political among the partner states. And the third issue, I'm going to, to stand for gender mainstreaming. I need to see women participating in uh, economic and uh, political issues. We have an example here, Madam Tuli Atsoni, uh, speaker of this parliament, is leading well of the parliament. We have example, Mama Samia Suhasani, leading our country well. So I'm going, I mean, women can, we you can afford the freedom in a, a very good thank, manner. Thank, thank you, you so much, Mr. Jafar Saeed Mneke. Thank you so much. You may now take your leave. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Katibu anayefuata, anayefuata ni ndugu Mashaka Halfan Ngole. Mheshimiwa mkubwa unamchanganya mgombea. Halfan Ngole, you're welcome to the parliament and these are the members who are going to vote for you once they are convinced with what you're going to do as a member of the East African Legislative Assembly should they vote for you. So you're given three minutes to convince the House why they should vote for you. Please. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, Dr. Tulia Axon, Honorable Kasim Majariwa Majariwa, Prime Minister of the United Republic of Tanzania, Honorable Ministers, Deputy Ministers, and the members of the Parliament present in this House. Honorable Members of the Parliament, my name is Masha Kangole, a holder of a Master's Degree in Business Administration from Zumbe University holder of a first degree of law from Zanzibar University and the holder of a postgraduate diploma in legal practice from the Law School of Tanzania. Honorable members of the parliament, I am also an advocate of the High Court and the courts below there too and I have been, in, in, I've been practicing law for almost 10 years now. And therefore, I am conversant with the lawmaking process, which is a primal obligation of the East African Legislative Assembly. Honorable members of the parliament, I am standing here before this house contesting for the post of a member of East Africa Legislative Assembly, as I believe to be a competent and a qualified person for that post. Honorable members of the parliament, I pledge with my commitment that once I am elected a member of the parliament, I will stand and defend the interests of our country on any matters presented to the East African Legislative Assembly. Honorable members of the parliament, I also pledge to fully participate in the legislation of, of the laws of the East African Legislative Assembly, which are beneficial to our nation and without compromising to the national interests, to our national interests. Honorable members of the parliament, lastly but not least, I commend all the efforts and the leadership, for, leadership of our president, Her Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan, towards the achievement of the first milestone of the East Africa Legislative Assembly, which is the Custom Union. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, the members of parliament have heard you. 
and I can see a number of them raising up, but there are more than three. So we will have Honorable Zainab Katimba, we will have uh, Honorable Olele Kaita, and Honorable Musa Sima. Those will be three. So Honorable Zainab Katimba. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I just have one very simple question. Uh, Advocate uh, Mashaka, can you tell this August House, can you give us an overview of what the East African Legislative Assembly is, when um, it was inaugurated, and who was the first speaker of the East African Legislative Assembly? Well, I will let you respond to the first question, and overrule the two questions. The question asking about the first speaker and when it was inaugurated. So respond to the first one. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Member, for the question. Honorable Speaker, the East Africa Legislative Assembly is, a, is an arm of the East African community. It is purpose is to legislate laws. It was inaugurated on fifth, on, in the November 2001. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I had mentioned Honorable Olele Kaita. I, I thank you, Madam Speaker, for, for the opportunity. Um, my, my learned friend, Mashaka, I, I'm going to ask you a very legal question. What are the statutory function of the East African Legislative Assembly? I thank you. Uh, Mr. Mashaka, Ngole. Thank minutes. you, Honorable Speaker. The functions of the East African Legislative Assembly are in Article 49 of the treaty. The treaty which established the East African community. Honorable member, members of the parliament, the primary objectives or functions of the East African Legislative Assembly, first is to legislate the laws applicable within the East African community. Secondly, is to debate and approve budget for the East African community. The other functions are to discuss, to approve the audit report and other reports submitted to the East African Legislative Assembly and other matters presented before the East African Legislative Assembly. Okay, thank you so much. And we also had, uh, I had also mentioned Honorable Musa Sima. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, Mr. Mashaka, you told us that you will defend our national interest. Can you tell us how? Uh, Mr. Mashaka Angola, you have one minute to respond to the question. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. In the uh, parliament, in, in participating to the Parliament of the East Africa Legislative Assembly, my role and my role is to defend the interests of my country. Therefore, I will ensure all matters presented before the East Africa Legislative Assembly are well scrutinized so as to make sure that no national interest is compromised. Oh, honorable members, you have already asked th three questions, so I'm going to give you 30 seconds to wind up and then you can leave. Honorable Speaker, honorable members of the parliament, I urge you to vote for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. You may now take your leave. Thank you. sasa kwenye kundi la mwisho kundi la nne kundi la wagombea wa Tanzania bara katibu ndugu Ansar Abubakar Kachwambwa
Mr. Ansar Abakar Kachomba, you're welcome to the Parliament of the United Republic of Tanzania. And before you are the vote. who are likely to vote for you, should they be convinced that you know you fit to be a member of the East Africa Legislative Assembly? You're given three minutes to convince the House, please. Thank you very much. Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable the Prime Minister, Honorable Ministers, and Honorable Members of the Parliament. My name is Kachwamba Ansar Abubakar. Please take note that I'm a zealot, a patriot, and compromising member of Chama Chama Pinduzi. Why am I contesting for this position? First of all, it is my right. Being a Tanzanian, mature, with enough exposure, educated, it's my right to contest for that position. Secondly, we are all aware that the duties and functions of the Member of Parliament are uniform all over the world. They are universal. They are known. You are the lawmakers. You are engaged in the debates about national issues. You approve the budget. You supervise the government. You stand as an arm of the, of, of, of the state. These duties are, are uniform all over the world. But purely, personally, the following will be the principles which will guide me in the execution of my duty and functions of, as a member of the parliament. These are the principles which will guide me. Principle number one, the national interest. Principle number two, security of our region. Principle number three, business. I would like to, be, to explain briefly on principle number one, on the national interest. The national interest is a dynamic term. It depends on the circumstance. At one time, it could, it could be a surge of refugees, it could be terrorism or anything. But once the event is defined as the national interest, then my duty starts there. What will be that duty? That duty will be with the spirit of the nation, with the patriotism, to make sure that the national interest is protected, safeguarded, entrenched, deep rooted and uncompromised. That, and I'll be accountable for that. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you so much. Um, okay, I'm only seeing one member who would like to ask you a question. Honorable uh, Hadija Taya. Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker. I would like to ask the question to Mr. Kachwamba. What is your weakness that can be a benefit to our country? I beg your pardon? I'm asking you, what is your weakness that can be a benefit to our country? What is your weakness that can be a benefit to your country? Is that weakness or weakness? I think if I heard her correctly, she's asking about your weakness. Witness. So, yeah, that's it. She, well, okay, you, you turn this side. She's asking if you have any weakness. That's her question. I'm so you can enough. tell the house if you have I'm any strong weakness. Enough. I don't have any weakness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, members, uh, that was the only question that uh, a member had risen up to ask. Okay, so you're given 30 seconds to wind up and then you can leave. Naomba kuraze nuzandio asante sana. You can repeat the same thing in English. Please, I beg for your vote. May God bless you. Thank you so much. You may now leave. Thank you. Thank you so much. And... Um, Katibu anayefuata anayefuata ni ndugu James Kinyasi Milia Ndugu James Kinyasi Milia
Mr. James Kinyasi Milia, uh, you're welcome to the parliament. And before you are the voters who you have to convince that you're capable and able to go represent the country at the, legislat uh, at the East African Legislative Assembly. So you're given three minutes to convince the House, please. You have the floor. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Prime Minister, distinguished members of parliament, good afternoon. My name is James Milia. I happen to be a lawyer and advocate of the High Court of Tanzania. I happen okay, to be a lawyer. Wait, wait a second. When you're speaking, it's usually not easy to be static, right. but you have to try, pull a little bit the mic, and then address the house. Thank you. May I start? Honorable Speaker, Honorable Prime Minister, distinguished members of parliament, good afternoon. My name is James Miller. I'm a lawyer by training. I hold a master's degree from the University of Pretoria and the American University in Cairo. Honorable Speaker, may I at this juncture thank God, thank the leadership of CCM, and thank all of you, because it's for you that I'm a candidate today. Honorable Speaker, I'm humbled to stand before you with immense humility that you are here for a task to elect members of parliament to represent our country in the East African Legislative Assembly. I believe in the EAC Assembly for a few reasons. One, it creates diversity. And diversity to me is strength and not a weakness. Two, it strengthens strengthen ties of brotherhood among and between member states. But three, three it is legislative and oversight mandate. It does create an opportunity in the framework for economic and policy framework which Tanzania will benefit. Honorable Speaker, I'm privy of the role of a member of parliament within the East African community, and I want to assure Tanzanians that all legislations passed in the EAC parliament will and should reflect to the interests of Tanzania all time. Honorable Speaker, I want to assure Tanzanians through your parliament that all times and always I will stand up for Tanzania even if the sky was to fall. Honorable Speaker, I qualify for this position. One, because I'm a lawyer, I'm patriot, and also I got a training through this parliament for five years to legislate. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Milia. The members of parliament have heard you. And, um, okay, there's one member of parliament who has reason to ask you a question. Honorable Judith Kapinga. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. One amongst our interests as a country is to promote Swahili language to be spoken in regional blocks, including East African community and Southern Africa development community and beyond. How are you going to further this interest? Excuse me, uh, Honorable Speaker, I've not heard it well. Can, can she repeat it again? I'm sorry. No. One amongst wait, our... Wait a second, mm. wait a second. Honorable Judith Kapinga, may you repeat yourself, please? Yes, Madam Speaker. One amongst our interests as a country is to promote Swahili language to be used in regional blocks such as East Africa community and Southern Africa development community. So how are you going to further such interests? You have heard it, Anna? Honorable Speaker. It Wait is a second. Have you heard the question? Yes. yes. All right. Please go ahead. Honorable Speaker, I thank you for the question. It's a great question. But one has to understand that what I'm going to the East African Legislative Assembly 
not really to represent my own personal views, if my country and the Foreign Affairs Ministry agrees that this is what you're going to present to other nations, if it's, they say it's Swahili today, Swahili tomorrow, I'm good to go. And I'll stand for that. But as a member of a member parliament from Tanzania, I will not take my own personal views, but views of my country. That's my question, if I understood her question well. Thank you so much. There is no other person standing to ask you questions, so I give you 30 seconds to wind up, then you may leave. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, distinguished members of parliament, I'm before you. Please, I was among and in this floor, please give me the chance to serve this nation as an AC member of parliament. Please vote for me. Thank you so much. You may now take your leave. Thank you. Katibu anayefuata. Anayefuata ni Dr. Ngwaru Jumanne Magembe. Dr. Ngwaru Jumanne Magembe. Dr. Ngwaru Jumane Magembe, you're welcome to this August House, uh, which is going to vote for you. And before you, our members who are ready to hear from you, uh, so that you convince them why you are, you know, why they should vote for you. So you're given three minutes to convince the House. You have the floor. Thank you, uh, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, Honourable Prime Minister, and Honourable Members, my name is. Uh, First of all, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Nguaru Magembe. I am a member of the East African Legislative Assembly who is completing his first term, which will end in uh, December. Um, right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, it has been an honor and a privilege beyond any words can possibly convey to represent my country in the East African Legislative Assembly. And I would like to start, right, Honorable Speaker, by thanking this August House from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of my heart, for the five years that they gave me trust to serve in the East African Legislative Assembly. I have been working tirelessly to repay that trust. I have been the most vocal member who defends our country, who promotes our country, who is tough, on oversight to make sure that the taxpayers' money of the United Republic of Tanzania do not go to waste or are used negligently. Therefore, stand before you, uh, right honorable speaker and honorable members, to ask for another five-year term. Um, if I am given another five-year term, right honorable speaker, I have a few priorities. The first priority will be to ensure that the private sector of Tanzania benefits from the common market. Uh, as you know, right, Honorable Speaker, since 2016, um, our country has been recording a trade balance surplus, meaning that we are exporting into the region more than we are importing. It will be my duty to make sure that the countries that we are exporting to, I will advocate that we will re we remove all of the non-tariff barriers, the NTBs, uh, things like uh, unnecessary tax measures, unnecessary um, product health uh, standards, and so forth. Secondly, I will continue to be tough on the issue of execution of the budget to ensure that the contributions from my country and the other seven countries uh, to, the nation, to the EAC budget are used judiciously and diligently. Thirdly, right honorable speaker, I would like to promise the honorable members that I will continue to give them feedback, continue to be close to them. Because, honorable members, without you, there can be no me. Thank you so much. I'm the Thank you so much. 
Um, there is only one member standing to ask you. Oh, there are two. So we have uh, Honorable Jerry Sla followed by Honorable Kigongala. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, or rather, right, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to ask one question to Honorable Dr. Angwaru Jumane Magembe. I'm quite impressed, uh, not only for your strong and credible presentation you just uh, presented to us, but also for your pronounced academic qualification to a young age. And uh, I'd like to ask you one question. Uh, when you are elected to represent us on 2017, uh, East African community had uh, five members stayed by then. Currently, we are aware that uh, South Sudan and Congo have joined the South community. And with the current government investment in infrastructure, be it the standard gauge and the, uh, the port uh, project, which will increase the haulage of good in this country, how are you going to cement our footprint as the member of the East African community on the biggest market of trade in the Congo as the new member of the East African community? Thank you. Dr. Angwaru, please, you have one minute to respond. Thank you, uh, Right Honorable uh, Speaker. That's a very good question. Uh, in truth, uh, we are competing with the Northern Corridor from Mombasa uh, through Nairobi, Kampala, and then down towards the Congo. But I would like to tell you, uh, Honorable uh, Jerry Sla, that our Central Corridor has been constructed cheaper, our SGR railway is cheaper, and we, are, we will be very competitive once it's operational. And I don't see how, there is no way that the, well, the Congolese business people, who we are, of course, uh, willing to use our central corridor, our central corridor is cheaper, it's shorter, we will be very competitive, uh, Honorable Jerry Sla. I don't want to say too much more in case um, I step on the toes of uh, the Executive, Honorable Prime Minister, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. But that's a very good question. Thank you so much. Uh, Honorable Dr. Kigongala. Oh, sorry, I, I also forgot, because the candidate has only one minute to respond, so you have to try and be brief to your questions. Please. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, I would like to ask one question to the contestant, Dr. Ngwaru Magembe, and that is, uh, Honorable Ngwaru Magembe, the world today is faced up with three most important challenges, which are uh, environmental degradation, the threat to food security that is posed by environmental degradation, and the third one is the high rate of uh, unemployment amongst the youth. I would like to ask you, if you are elected as a member of IALA, how are you going to foster uh, the, the IALA as a con constituent body of the East African community uh, towards finding solutions uh, uh, of these three most important challenges? And what is your take? Well, only one, please. Only one. He, he has only one minute to respond. And you have already asked environmental issues and, and youth unemployment. So I don't know which one between the two, environmental degradation or unemployment. No, that's just a background, but the question is, what You have is already the... asked him, come on, you have already asked him. Okay. <laughs> because you have asked him how he's going to, so when you, when you began with how, that's okay. the question. Okay. So I'm sure he has gotten it. I will rephrase it. What's your take towards fostering the solutions as an IALA towards the solving the challenge of env environmental degradation. All right, so Dr. Nwaru, you address environmental degradation and you don't have to look at him because people don't hear you properly. Just look at, the, uh, at, the, um, at your mic, thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. That is another very good question. I believe one could write a doctoral thesis just to answer that question. But in short, um, 
environmental degradation and uh, environmental degradation is a real issue. And if re-elected, if re-elected, this is uh, an area which I'm sure that I could form a bill that would help. Uh, thank you, thank you. I could form a bill, and uh, the bill would help to decrease environmental degradation within the seven partner states. Thank you. Thank you so much. Those were the two members of parliament who had wanted to ask you questions and you have already responded to them. So I'm giving you 30 seconds to wind up, then you can leave. Thank you. Well, Honorable Speaker, I would first like to start by asking you for your vote. And I'd like to ask for the vote of all of the members of parliament here. Their votes for yes, yes, yes. Let's send Dr. Ngwari Magembe back to the East African Legislative Assembly. And I love you all and God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, members, we are... Uh... Oh, sorry. Waishimiwa wabunge, <laughs> waishimiwa wabunge kwa kutumia kanuni ya 34 na fasili ndogo zinazo fuata hapo, tutaendelea na ishu huli mpaka tumalize. Uh, kwa hivyo katibu endelea kuita walio salia, anaifuata? Anaifuata ni ndugu adui safe kondo. Mr. Adui Safe Kondo, uh, these are the members of parliament who are going to vote for you if they are convinced that you are capable of representing the country, meaning Tanzania, to the East Africa Legislative Assembly. So you are given three minutes to explain about, you know, yourself and so convince the members to vote for you. So you have the floor. Three minutes. Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker of this Parliament of the United Republic of Tanzania, Honorable Tulia Axon, Deputy Speaker, the Prime Minister, distinguished ministers, members of Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, greetings to you all. My name is Adu Yusef Kondo. Uh, I was born 60, 60 years ago, and I'm here asking for your votes to enable me to become a member of parliament in the East African Legislative Assembly. Uh, educationally, I have a master's degree in sociology. It was found in the University of Dar es Salaam. I have also the first degree in the same discipline, same university. Uh, regarding my work experience, I'm advocacy officer by nature because I've been working for the marginalized groups right from the moment when I finished my schooling. I started working with the Dogodogo Center Street Children Trust and then ended by working in under the same sun. Uh, as you are all aware, that be, from the beginning, I mean, from between of the 2000 decade in Tanzania, there happened uh, some bad things to people with albinism in Tanzania. This was way back 2007, when we heard for the first time in Tanzania 
a person with albinism has been killed in uh, Sengerema. Day after uh, murder and bad activities towards people with albinism was so common. So under the same sign was formed in 2008 and it was formally launched here to do what we call public education on albinism. I was the teacher who went through this country uh, educating the public on albinism. And uh, as you can see, uh, there is safety and security of persons with albinism. So my intention, uh, if you allow me to go to the ELA, I want to do the same at the capacity of East Africa, because such practices against persons with albinism and people with disability in general are happening almost in every corner of the continent of Africa. Thank you so much. And uh, there is no member of parliament uh, rising up to ask you a question, so I'll give you 30 seconds to wind up, then you can take your leave. Please. I beg your pardon, I don't hear. I'm saying the members of parliament have understood you and they have no questions. Thank so you. I am giving you 30 seconds to wind up, then you can go. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency Speaker, the High Table, members of parliament, ladies and gentlemen, please vote for me to enable me become a ELA member. And thank you very much. Thank you so much. You may now take your leave. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. You can go now. Thank you. Wait a second. Somebody is coming to show you the way out. Okay. Um, Katibu Anefuata. Anefuata Nendugu Mohamed Msham Gulangwa. Dugu Muhammad Msham Gulangwa. Mr. Mohamed Msham Gulangwa, you're welcome to the House. Before you are the members of Parliament who are likely to vote for you when they are convinced about your capabilities of representing the country at the East Africa Legislative Assembly. So you're given three minutes to express yourself. Please, you have the floor. Thank you, the Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Members of the Parliament, before you is uh, engineer Mohamed Msham Gulangwa, possessing a master's degree in engineering management from the University of Dar es Salaam, also holding an MBA degree from the Open University of Tanzania, uh, holding a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from the University of Dar es Salaam, and also registered as a professional engineer with the Engineers Registration Board of Tanzania with the registration number PE3166. Standing before you, I request for your votes to represent the nation in the East African Legislative Assembly. The Honorable Speaker and the Members of Parliament, I humbly request for your votes. Okay. I am. Um, there is one Member of Parliament who has just risen up to ask you one question. Honorable Manaisha Ulenge. I assume now you are the member of Iala. 
what is your true main agenda that will foster economic development considering of the geographical advantage and the resources that Tanzania have? Yes, Mr. Mohamed Mshangulangwa, you have yes. one minute to respond. The Honorable Speaker, the members of Parliament, being a representative of the nation in the Assembly, I'll be led by the instructions from the nation because I'll be representing the same. So uh, what I'll be doing there, I have come, I mean, I have passed through the core values of the EA. And I know that team spirit, I'll be obtaining the instructions and the directions from the nation. Um, so there was only one member who was interested in asking a question. So I'm giving you, there is somebody else? Honorable Contestant Charles. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for the chance. I just want to ask one question to Mr. Candidate. As we know for now, uh, Congo DRC have joined to East African community. And one of the, among the national interests is to make sure we reach the Congo market. So, Mr. Candidate, when we give you the chance, what are you going to make sure that our country will reach Congo market compared to another East African countries? As I responded to the first Wait a question. second. Wait a second. Mr. Angulangwa, you have to be called first before you speak, before yes, you address the, the house. Speaker. So now you have the floor. You have the floor. Yeah, the Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Members of the Parliament. Uh, as I said before when I was introducing myself, I have the MBA in... Uh, uh, from the Univ Open University of uh, Tanzania, and I also have the other uh, capacities as uh, ex explained earlier. Being a representative, I don't, it, do it doesn't mean that I'm going to represent my party there, but I'll be representing the nation. So I'll be doing what the nation will be uh, is directing me, and also the nation will be expecting from me. Thank you so much. Those were the questions from members of parliament. And so now I give you 30 seconds to wind up and then you can take your leave. The honor, honorable speaker, the late president of Tanzania, Mr. Magufuli used to say that Maendeleo Hayana Chama. African community. Kindly vote for me. Thank you so much. You may now take your leave. Thank you. Katibu Anaifuata. Anaifuata ni Ndugu Thomas Malima. Ndugu Thomas Malima. Mr. Thomas Malima, uh, before you are the members of Parliament of Tanzania, and they would like to hear from you why they should elect you to be a country's representative to the East Africa Legislative Assembly. So you have three minutes to express yourself and convince the House. Please, you have the floor. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Prime Minister and the other honorable members of this honorable parliament of Tanzania. Honorable Speaker, first of all, I have to introduce to you 
My name is Thomas DC Malima. I'm a graduate of Bachelor of Arts with Education from the University of Dar es Salaam. And through that education, I'm also a head of school in Kigoma, at Kigoma. Here, I'm here just to vie for the post of representing our nation to the East African Legislative Assembly due to the fact that, first of all, I'm a Tanzanian. I have the right to contest for this, and also I'm capable to contest for this and to represent the nation at the assembly. I know the function of this assembly is just to discuss various agendas and motions which are tabled in the legislative assembly. Also, the assembly is responsible to discuss and approve the budget of all organs of the East African community. And so therefore, as a member of East African Legislative Assembly, if you will elect me to be a member, first of all, I, I will co co coordinate and communicate together with other elected members from Tanzania to take the national interest to the Legislative Assembly. Here, we need a person who is loyal to the nation, a person who is cooperative to the government, a person who knows the, the, the resources of the nation and how to protect them. I'm the one who I'm able to, co to, to, to cooperate with other members who will be elected and to, to be a member of this ele uh, legislative assembly for the interest of the nation so that to make the nation of our, our nation to grow longer. Also, as a member of, legislative, of this legislative assembly, I will make sure that I will take directives from the ministry responsible for East African community affairs in order to make sure that when we are discussing issues in the parliament, we will discuss according to the national privileges and the priorities. Thank you so much. Um, I see no member uh, interested in asking any question. Oh, there is one. Yeah, there is only one. Honorable Alim Chungahela. Thank you, Mr. Honorable Speaker. The region, this region has been one of the the region has been one among the dumping place of the market. What are the strategies you have to alleviate the problem? Thank you. I, there was a noise. I did not understand why. Members of Parliament, um, he's saying he didn't hear you. Mr. Uh, uh, Honorable Alim Chungaila, can you repeat yourself, please? Yeah, what I say is this region is among the dumping place of the foreign market. What, what is your strategy to alleviate the problem of dumping in this region of East Africa community? Okay. Uh, honorable members, I will rule that out as a question to a, to a candidate. And I see no other member of parliament uh, raising up to ask a question. So I give you 30 seconds to wind up, and then you may take your leave. Thank okay, you. thank you, Madam Speaker. As I've introduced to you, I'm going for this post because I know there are some issues which we are going to discuss, not for my own views, but the national views to the community. Even the issue of markets, 
together with other elected members, with the government of Tanzania, we will make the strategy to make sure that this will be the, our strategy to the East African Legislative Assembly. So through that strategy, we will make sure that our nation benefits from the community and also the East African community benefits and we will hinder, uh, we will prohibit Thank you so much. the dumping commodities from other countries, not from Thank you uh, so Russia, much, Mr. Mr. Malina. Thank you. Thank you so much. You may now... Yeah. Thank you so much. You may now take your leave. Thank you. Thank you. Mheshimiwa Abunge, huyu ndio alikuwa mgombea wa mwisho kuja kujieleza mbele yetu. Sasa tunaelekea kwenye zoezi la kupiga kura. Na kwa hivyo ni waombe wa bunge wote walioko nje waingie ndani ili tuhesabiane. E, na waka, tukishamaliza hesabu mbunge alieko nje kwa sababu tunataka kutenda haki hatoruhusiwa kuingia tukishamaliza hesabu ili tusisumbuke kwenye kuhesabu kura. Wabunge wote walioko nje waingie ndani zoezi la kuwahesabu linaanza mara moja. Katibu Katibu na Tunahitaji kujua ni wangapi Lakini wakati tunaendelea na hilo Weshimu wabunge tuwe watulivu kidogo Wakati tunaendelea kwa subiru wenzetu Walionje na waona wanaendelea kuingia Ili tupate hesabu yetu kamili Kabla tujanza kupigia kura Hai, wakati hesabu inaendelea kupigwa hapa e, katibu na timu yake waendelee kujiandaa kwa sababu zoezi la kupiga kura linapoanza karatasi zitagawiwa kwa hiyo maandalizi yaendelee wakati nasubiri hesabu hapa mbele Mheshimiwa 
wa bunge sasa milango hiyo haita funguliwa nimeshaletea orodha hapa sio orodha nimeletewa idadi ya wabunge waliopo kwa hiyo wasaidizi milango iko mitatu ya kutoka na kuingia hapa ndani mjipange vizuri ili kama mtu yuko nje maana yake niletee kwanza taarifa hapa ndo aingie huko ndani ili tuse tukapata changamoto kwenye kuhesabu kura eh wasaidizi mjipange kabisa milangoni asanteni sana Washima bunge idadi ya, ya wabunge tuliopo tayari kwa ajili ya kupiga kura ni mia tatu Wabunge tumehesabiwa na tuko mia tatu Kwa hiyo zoezi la kupiga kura litaanza sasa. E, katibu na timu yako tunahitaji sasa makaratasi yaanze kugawiwa. Tuko wabunge mia tatu Kama kuna mbunge anaongezeka asiingie kabla sijapewa taarifa hapa mbele. Waheshimiwa wabunge wakati wanawaletea hizo karatasi mtapewa karatasi za kupigia kura nne kulingana na makundi yale manne na kila karatasi imeandikwa upige kura ngapi kundi la kwanza unapiga kura tatu kati ya majina sita na mtayaona hapo kundi la pili mnapiga kura mbili kati ya hawa watano walioko kwenye hiyo karatasi ya kura lakini kundi la tatu mtaona majina yako matatu mnatakiwa kupiga kura moja na kwenye karatasi pia imeandikwa na pia kwenye kundi la nne mnatakiwa kupiga kura tatu kati ya wagombea sita waliopo na niwakumbushe kwenye sehemu ya kupiga kura tatu ukipiga nne kura imeharibika Nadhani hilo limeeleweka na kwenye kura moja ukipiga mbili imeharibika. Kwenye kura mbili ukipiga tatu imeharibika vivyo hivyo na nyingine zote. Wasaidizi sasa mtawanyike tayari kwa kugawa kura. Sasa ngoja ngoja tuelewane. Wa, nyinyi mlioshika karatasi mmeshika za kundi moja moja. Mmeshika karatasi za kundi moja moja au makundi yote? Kundi moja moja. Wao wameshika makundi mangapi? Kundi moja. Kundi A. Yule kule nyuma. Ah, sa, sasa kama hivyo ndivyo katibu. Eh ngoja ngoja njoo njoo. Kama ndivyo kama mnagawa moja moja nendeni kwa pamoja. Kama mnagawa moja moja nendeni kwa pamoja ili mnampa huyu nne 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 mpaka tutakaposema nani hajapata tutajua hajapata karatasi ipi kwa sababu lasi hivyo tutachanganya mambo. Hebu njoo usichukue hiyo karatasi yache tu haina neno. Njoo wewe njoo huku mbele. Wale walioshika kundi A ni wepi? Wale washika kundi A Aya kundi la kwanza. Jamani mwe mnanisikiliza huku. Wewe na wewe umeshika ya kwanza? Huyu wewe. Sogea nyuma kidogo si wewe. Ei sogea wewe mpanda. Ehe sasa mfuatane kwa mtindo huo. Hap ngoja anzieni hapa kwa mheshimiwa Sanga. Da, mpeni akikisheni anapata karatasi nne za makundi yote mnaenda na mna hiyo. Kwa sababu mkitawanyika hatutajua mnaenda kugawa kura namna gani. Sijui nimeeleweka? Yaani anapopita A anapita na B anapita na mwingine. Kwa hiyo mwingine anzie pale kwa waziri mkuu. Kwa waziri mkuu A B C D pale. Kwa hiyo mnaenda kwa makundi namna hiyo. Aya mheshimiwa Sanga una karatasi ngapi? Nne. Profesa? Profesa hapa ameongozana na profesa. Daktari? Nne. Aya sawa. Mspika. Kuhusu ufafanuzi kidogo. Ufafanuzi wa jinsi ya kupiga kura. 
a ah, ufafanuzi karibu Mheshimiwa Speaker ulikuwa unatangaza ufafanuzi wa kupiga kura nitaka kufahamu katika katika ballot paper imeonyesha kwamba kuna sehemu unapiga watu watatu umesema mkipiga watu wanne kura imeharibika je katika watatu nikiamua kumpigia mmoja Sawa sasa masharti masharti tulioweka masharti tulioweka kwenye hizi karatasi za kura na masharti aliyokuwa ameasoma katibu mapema karatasi inaelekeza hivi kwa mfano kundi A inasema piga kura tatu tu kwa kundi hili weka alama ya vema weka alama ya vema sasa kwa sababu imesema piga kura tatu haijasema piga angalau piga kura tatu Usianze hapa na mtaka mmoja tu. Kwa sababu zinatakiwa tatu ndio hesabu zetu ziende vizuri. Wewe nani ambaye hujamsikia hapa mpaka upige kura pungufu jamani? Si mmesikia agombea hapa jamani. Eh, yani wewe ukosa watatu kati ya hawa kweli haiwezekani. Haya, waheshimiwa wabunge, zoezi la ku, la kugawa makaratasi limeshaanza. Na sasa naambiwa wako wabunge nje wanasubiri kuingia. Sasa kama nilivyosema zoezi letu ni la wazi. Nataka kujua wako wangapi? Upande huu wako wangapi? Mheshimiwa ngoja ngoja Mheshimiwa Mariam Kisangi na kuona unaingia. Ulikuwa umeshahesabiwa au hapana? Kwa sababu wewe msaidizi hapo mlangoni ndio unataka kunichanganya. Lazima nipee taarifa. Au ametoka upande huu anahamia kutoka huko. Asante sana mheshimiwa. Shukrani. Aya huko mheshimiwa Makagenda anaingia na natakiwa nipate taarifa kama alisha alishahesabiwa au hapana. Mheshimiwa Makagenda wakati tunahesabu ulikuepo ama hukuepo. Kwa hiyo mheshimiwa bunge ile 300 inakuwa 300 na moja. Tumesha sikilizana Mbunge mmoja ameongezeka. Mheshimiwa Kamwale naona umesimama. Sema na kisemeo. Mheshimiwa Speaker wakati wajumbe wanahesabiwa nilikuwa nje. Mheshimiwa umepita mlango upi? Maana isije kuwa walikuhesabu alafu hapa nikaongeza idadi isije ikaleta changamoto. Uli, umepita upande upi? Upande huu. Upande huu. Ndio. Haya, kwa hiyo tatu na mbili. Taarifa mheshimiwa speaker. Mheshimiwa bunge asiingie hata nyinyi wasaidizi huko milangoni, asiingie mtu kabla sijaambiwa. Taarifa mheshimiwa speaker. Mheshimiwa Joseph Mwagama. Mlango mkubwa kuna mheshimiwa Zaitun Swai alikuwa ajahesabiwa. Mheshimiwa Zaitun Swai tunakuwa na 200 na 3. Mheshimiwa Zaitun Swai. Kwa hiyo hapo anakuwa ameongezeka wabunge watatu zaidi. Kwa hiyo 300 na 3 jumla. Mheshimiwa bunge narejea tena kwa sababu la sivyo mtakuwa hampigi kura na ni haki yenu ya msingi. Kama hukuepo wakati wa kuhesabiwa wasaidizi wa milangoni mnaniangusha asiingie mtu bungeni kabla sijapewa taarifa haya wabunge ambao walikuwa hawajahesabiwa naona mheshimiwa Rita Kabati umesimama umepita mlango upi msaidizi hapo mlangoni unahitaji msaidizi mwenzio aongezeke maana unaingiza watu wengi sana na uniambii haya namuona mheshimiwa Catherine Magige mheshimiwa Rita Kabati mheshimiwa Bona Kalua mheshimiwa Mary Masanja hao ni wabunge wanne wameongezeka kwa hiyo tunakuwa na tatu na saba. Msaidizi uliyeko upande huu mbunge asiingie kabla sijapewa taarifa. Nadhani hilo limeeleweka.
moja. Kuja kwenye simba hapa. Sikuja kwanza. Ongea kwenye mic. Mheshimiwa speaker. Taarifa. Taarifa mheshimiwa speaker. Mheshimiwa Charles Kajegi. Mheshimiwa speaker, mimi sinaokea kama na mimi nimehesabiwa. Nime Waheshimiwa wabunge. <laughs> Waheshimiwa wabunge sawa. Sasa ili ili zoezi naona linakuwa gumu kama mtu anasema hajui ama anajua. hakuna neno tusiwe na wasiwasi. Hapa na idadi ya na saba lakini nimeshaagiza wasaidizi wahesabu tena sasa hivi. wa bunge tv hayo ndio yanaendelea ndani ya kumbi wa bunge na okay, kupiga kura kujatangazwa bado naona kuna watu mmeanza kuweka tiki huko <laughs> subirini wate tupate karatasi kwa sababu kama zitakuwa karatasi zimepelea zoezi litakuwa eh, litatusumbua kidogo kwa subirini kidogo Subirini kidogo. Wakati zoezi la ugawaji karatasi ambapo hadi sasa idadi inaonyesha wabunge walioko ndani ya ukumbi wa bunge ni wabunge tatu na saba na wakati huo huo zoezi la kuhesabu wabunge walioko ndani likiendelea. Tungali Karatasi karibu mmoja zote hazipo hapa. Mheshimiwa Getere maana yake umeingia baadaye. Jirani yako mbona anazo? Hapana, ni hizo hizo tumepewa mbili tu mheshimiwa. Kuna za karatasi nyingine ya tatu. Umepewa ngapi? Mbili tu. Na wasi wameshaondoka wa wameenda upande wa pili. Haya, ni ngoja nisaidie. Mheshimiwa Getere, nisomeza kwako ni kundi gani na kundi gani? Kundi B na kundi A. Bado C na D. Jamani yeah. makaratasi C na D upande huu bado hayajafika. Mheshimiwa speaker hata huku bado. Hata huku mheshimiwa. Mheshimiwa speaker hata huku bado. Mbili au tatu? Hata huku bado tumepata mbili tu. Tunaendelea kuangalia kuyatazama Mmoja vizuri nyinyi mnaogawa makaratasi nisikilizeni mtu ambaye ana kundi C na D hebu anyoshe mkono C na D Che a a sio wabunge wanaogawa karatasi C na D nani wanazo Wewe mwenye C hapo katikati wewe ongea na mheshimiwa Nema Mgaya Una kundi gani Njoo malizie kwanza upu. Mwenye de Mwenye kundi de Nyinyi wasaidizi wa katibu mwenye kundi de Mmoja arejee huku malizeni kwanza upande huu maliza hapa alafu fuata hapa ninavyofuata Rudi hapa Rudi hapa anzia hapa Haya kule nyuma nani hana nne upande wangu wa kulia hapa kuna mtu hana karatasi nani ya kundi gani Che huna huyo wa nyuma yako ana nini Aya Che yule pale akupe Kuna mtu hana hapo mbele Zinakuja zinakuja bunge tv kinachoendelea ni zoezi la ugawaji karatasi kwa ajili ya zoezi muhimu la upigaji kura 
e, na huku wasaidizi wakatibu ukihakikisha kila mbunge basi anapata karatasi kutoka kwa makundi manne makundi ambayo ndio ambayo yamegombewa katika nafasi hizo za wabunge e, wanaohitajika ni tisa na tisa ni kila nchi wanachama wa Jumuiya Afrika Mashariki wanakuja na wabunge tisa wabunge ambao kwa pamoja wataliunda bunge la Jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki Kine kule nyuma kuna mtu hana karatasi yote hapa Wote mnazo nne Mheshimiwa Matei wote mnazo nne sasa Baada ipi Nini Aya kundi D mpelekee karatasi mheshimiwa Juliet Masaburi Aya mheshimiwa bunge mlio nyuma ya mheshimiwa waziri mkuu kila mtu ana karatasi nne Jamani mnaojibu amko nyuma ya mheshimiwa waziri mkuu <laughs> Nyinyi wote mnazo hapo Mheshimiwa B hatuna huku. B. Mheshimiwa Rita Kabati huna karatasi gani? Aya A huku mbele mpelekeni karatasi mheshimiwa Rita Kabati. Yule anayedawa A ampelekee karatasi mheshimiwa Rita Kabati. Mheshimiwa Speaker B hatuna hapa. B. Nani anayezungumza? Aya <laughs> mheshimiwa Juliet Masabuli umeshapata? Mheshimiwa Juliana umeshapata? Umeshapata? Baba. Mheshimiwa Rita Kabati bado kundi A. Jamani kundi A mtafutieni karatasi mheshimiwa Rita Kabati kundi A. B. Kundi A mheshimiwa Rita Kabati, mheshimiwa speaker kundi B. Upande wangu ah mheshimiwa wana Kuna karatasi gani mheshimiwa naibu waziri? Be, be. Be. Yeah. Aya. Modesta, karatasi B kwa mheshimiwa naibu waziri. Karatasi B kwa mheshimiwa naibu waziri hana. Mtafutie. Aya upande wangu wa kulia mheshimiwa mkuchika una karatasi nne. Una karatasi nne. Upande wangu wa kulia kuna mtu ana karatasi pungufu ya nne? Hakuna. Mheshimiwa Neema Ngaya huna karatasi namba ngapi? Namba 4 mheshimiwa speaker namba 4. Namba D. Eh. D mwenye karatasi D awape mheshimiwa Neema, mheshimiwa Lusinde, mheshimiwa Hussein. Kizingiti nasubiri idadi ya wabunge walioko humu ndani ili nimruhusu mheshimiwa Rose aingie. Mgombea Ado Shaibu Ado, Jafari Saidi Mneke na Mashaka Halfani Ngole. Hili ni kundi la vyama vya walio wachache bungeni na hili limetambuliwa kama kundi C. E, na kundi D ni wagombea kutoka Tanzania, James Kinyasi, Milia, 
Dr. Ngwalu Jumanne Magembe, wanne Adui Seifu Kondo, watano Mohamed Mshamu Bulangwa na sita ni Thomas Malimba. Hili ni kundi D. zoezi la ugawaji karatasi likiendelea ndani ya ukumbi wa bunge ambapo wasaidizi wakiendelea kugawa karatasi na kuhakikisha kila mbunge anapata karatasi kutoka katika makundi yote manne
zoezi la kukusanya kura likiendelea ndani ya ukumbi wa bunge hili likiendelea tujikumbushe sifa za mtu kuchaguliwa kuwa mbunge wa bunge la jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki sifa ambazo zimeainishwa katika ibara ya hamsini kifungu cha pili ambapo ni na kwanza kabisa ili mtu achaguliwe katika nafasi hiyo awe raia wa nchi mwanachama husika B awe na vigezo vya kumwezesha kuchaguliwa kuwa mbunge katika bunge la nchi yake kwa mujibu wa katiba ya nchi husika. Na C asiwe waziri katika nchi mwanachama. tayari asante sana Waheshimiwa bunge ambaye bado ana karatasi A mkononi anyoshe juu Haya kundi A nao kusanya karatasi ongezeni mwendo sanywa kutoka kundi A. Kumbuka kuna makundi manne. Kuna kundi A, B, C na D. Na wabunge ambao wako ndani ya ukumbi wa bunge kwa ajili ya kutekeleza zoezi hili muhimu ni wabunge mbili Tunaendelea kuzipitia sifa za mtu kushaguliwa kuwa mbunge wa bunge la Afrika Mashariki na tumekwisha kitizama sifa ya kwanza ya pili na sasa tunaendelea na sifa ya tatu kwamba ili uweze kuchaguliwa kuwa mbunge wa bunge la jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki usiwe waziri katika nchi mwanachama Kusanya rejeni huko mbele nani ana karatasi ya kundi A bado waheshimiwa bunge Kundi A rejeni huko mbele na mabox Kule nyuma modesta kuna mtu hajapiga kura au shida iko wapi Waheshimiwa bunge tunawatangazia ili muandae karatasi zenu mapema lazima la sivyo hili zoezi litakuwa gumu sana Umu ndani si tunajua jamani kusoma na kuandika au Kuna mtu hayoni a Aya tafadhali kusanyeni hizo kura zote kwenye box moja kundi a Iko hapa Aya funika hizo kura tafadhali. Aya kundi B sasa. Kundi B nyinyi mko wengi, anzia upande huu wawili, anzia upande huu wawili. Kundi B. Modesta huku. Wawili huku. Aya. Anzia hapa ndio maana mnachanganya mambo. Au zimejikusanya pembeni? Aya tunaanza kukusanya kundi B sasa. Mheshimiwa bunge ushauri kwa sababu kura ni siri na umeifunga mpe mtu wa pembeni kuliko kumfanya mtumishi azunguluke kwenye viti. Kura ni siri na umeifunga mpe mtu wa pembeni ili wapite kwenye kwenye hayo maeneo ya kupita. Kunja kura yako mpe mtu wa pembeni hata ifungua.
Sanya kura lipo kundi B yakiwa yamesalia kundi C na kundi D nasi tunaendelea kuzitazama Zipelekeni pembeni Upande anaopita mhudumu ndio peleka upande huo Mheshimiwa Kitila ndio uko pembeni tukusanyie kura naona majirani zako bado wanapeperusha hapo Changaye mambo si hatujaanza. Wenye karatasi B wanyoshe juu. Karatasi B. Aya B rejeni huku mbele kama mmemaliza kukusanya faster. B rejeni huku mbele na mabox. Waheshimiwa bunge andaeni kura C kundi C. Andaeni kura C na pelekeni pembeni. Andaeni kura si na peleka kwa mbunge alieko pembeni Haya tunaenda vile vile Kundi si sasa Kundi si anzia huku Wengine wawili wanzie huku Nenda kwenye zile za katikati pale sifa ya nne ya mtu kuchaguliwa kuwa mbunge wa bunge la Jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki e, ni kwamba asiwe mtumishi wa Jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki na sifa ya tano awe na uzoefu na nia ya kuendeleza malengo na madhumuni ya Jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki Mshamaliza kukusanya hizo waanze waanze kujiandaa kukusanya kundi D. Aya kundi chere jeni mbele haraka. Wekeni kwenye boksi ambalo limeandikwa kundi che Aya anzeni kukusanya kundi de Waishimua bunge peleka kwa mbunge alieko pembeni Kundi D zinaanza kukusanywa sasa. Katibu Zama sifa nne na sasa tunaitazama sifa ya tano Aya zinakusanyo hapo 
Mwenye karatasi D ainyoshe juu ili ikusanywe. Haya, D ndio enda kukusanya rudini huku mbele. Rudini huku mbele muweke kwenye boxi lililoandikwa. Moja ya kifungu cha kwanza ya mkataba muda wa ubunge katika bunge la Afrika Mashariki ni miaka mitano ambapo mbunge anaweza kuchaguliwa tena kwa kipindi kingine cha miaka mitano na kama ambavyo umeshuhudia wakati wagombea wa kigombea wa kijinadi kuomba kuchaguliwa katika nafasi hizi wapo ambao wamesema tayari na mtumsikilize speaker wa bunge linalofuata ni la kuhesabu hizi kura na kanuni zinanipa mimi mamlaka ya kuchagua watu ambao nataka waka nisaidie kusimamia hili zoezi la kuhesabu kura pamoja na wasaidizi kutoka ofisi ya katibu kwa hivyo nimewateua waheshimiwa wabunge wawili Mheshimiwa Dr. Joseph Kizito Muhagama na Mheshimiwa Grace Tendega. Kwa hiyo waheshimiwa wabunge wawili hawa wataenda kutazama hilo zoezi la kuhesabu kura na wataongozana na hawa wengine ambao wanaenda kuhesabu katibu kwa namna mlivyojipanga sasa. Wale mliopewa wale mlio teuliwa kwenda kuhesabu kura muongozane na Ay, asante sana Naona kuna wabunge wanajiuliza tatizo. Ndio maana huwa anasema nikisimama hapa mwe mnanisikiliza kwa sababu kuna maswali mnauliza ambayo yameshasomwa utaratibu hapa. Wagombea wako ishirini mnataka kila mgombea akawe na wakala. Kanuni yetu ya kumi na moja inaeleza utaratibu. Kwa hiyo kwa hiyo nammesomewa humu mu ndani. Na ndio maana wameteuliwa hao wawili kwa ajili ya kwenda kufanya kazi hiyo. Kwa hiyo msiwe na wasiwasi. Msiwe na wasiwasi. Mheshimiwa bunge sasa kura zimeenda kuhesabiwa. Kwa kutumia kanuni ya tano Kwa kutumia kanuni ya tano ambayo inanipa mamlaka ya kutazama eh, eh, uendeshaji bora wa eh, bunge na mambo nayo. Na sasa hapa tuna ratiba mbele yetu na wagombea kama mlivyoona wako 20. Kwa kila mtu lazima ahesabiwe kura zake zoezi ambalo litachukua muda kidogo. Sasa kwa kutazama ratiba yetu tuna ratiba manake baada ya uchaguzi bado kuna mambo mengine yanapaswa kuendelea. Sasa kwa kutumia mamlaka nilionayo chini ya kanuni ya tano pamoja na kwamba nayo yote naweza kufanya maamuzi lakini nimeamua kufanya maamuzi leo ya kidemokrasia. Kuna namna mbili, either tuendelee na ratiba iliyoko hapa tukisubiri matokeo au turudi saa moja tupewe matokeo na tuendelee na ratiba. Sasa demokrasia tuendelee na ratiba ama turudi saa kumi moja? Tuendelee na ratiba. Tuendelee na ratiba. Katibu Hoja za serikali, miswaba ya sheria ya serikali Msaada wa sheria marekebisho ya sheria mbalimbali za fedha wa mwaka 2022 the written laws financial provisions amendment bill 2022 kusoma mara ya pili Waheshimiwa wabunge eh, hoja hii ilikuwa imeshawekwa mezani asubuhi na hivyo ni muite mheshimiwa waziri wa fedha na mipango Mheshimiwa Mwigulu Lame Kinchemba aje atoe hoja yake. Mheshimiwa Speaker, naomba kutoa hoja kwamba msaada wa marekebisho ya sheria mbalimbali za fedha mwaka 2022 The Written Laws Financial Provision Amendment Act 2022 
pamoja na marekebisho yake sasa usomwe kwa mara ya pili. Mheshimiwa Speaker, awali ya yote napenda kutoa shukrani za dhati kwa kamati ya bunge ya budget chini ya mwenyekiti wake Mheshimiwa Silo Daniel Baran, mbunge wa Babati Vijijini kwa kujadili kwa kina mswada huu na kutoa ushauri mbalimbali mbali ili kuboresha. Mheshimiwa Speaker, napenda kuhakikishia bunge lako tukufu kwamba mswada huu umezingatia kwa kiasi kikubwa ushauri na mapendekezo ya kamati ya bunge ya budget. Aidha namshukuru pia mwanasheria mkuu wa serikali kwa kuandaa mswada huu pamoja na marekebisho yake. Lengo la mswada huu ni kufanya marekebisho kwenye sheria zinazosimamia kodi na mrabaa kwa kubadili viwango vya kodi pamoja na mrabaa na kuweka taratibu za uto, utoaji vivutio kwa wawekezaji ili kuhamasisha uzalishaji kwa viwanda vya ndani ya nchi pamoja ya, ya magu, mbolea pamoja na magunia ya mkonge pamoja na kuondoa changamoto zilizopo hivi sasa katika utekelezaji wa sheria ya uwekezaji Tanzania sura namba 38 Mheshimiwa Speaker, sheria zinazopendekezwa kufanywa marekebisho ni sheria zifuatazo. Mos moja ushuru wa bidhaa sura namba 147, mbili sheria ya kodi ya mapato sura namba 332, tatu sheria ya madini sura namba 123, nne sheria ya ushuru wa barabara na mafuta sura namba 220, na tano sheria ya kodi ya ongezeko la thamani sura namba 148. Maudhui ya mswada. Mheshimiwa Speaker, mswada huu umegawanyika katika sehemu sita ambapo sehemu ya kwanza inahusu masharti ya utangulizi ambayo yanajumuisha jina la mswada na namna ya ambavyo sheria mbalimbali zinazopendekezwa kurekebishwa. Mheshimiwa Speaker, sehemu ya pili ya mswada yenye ibara ya tatu hadi ya tano inapendekeza kurekebisha sheria ya ushuru wa bidhaa sura namba 147 ambayo kifungu cha 128 kinapendekezwa kurekebishwa ili kumpa mamlaka waziri mwenye dhamana ya masuala ya fedha baada ya kupata idhini ya baraza la mawaziri kusamehe ushuru kwenye bidhaa zitakazotumika katika utekelezaji wa miradi ya uwekezaji mahiri na mahiri maalum inayo, inayo e, idhinishwa na kamati ya taifa ya uwekezaji yani NISKI hata hivyo iwapo itabainika kwamba msamaha uliotolewa kwa mwekezaji umetumika tofauti na malengo yaliyokusudiwa msamaha huo usika utafutwa na mwekezaji atalazimika kulipa kodi iliyosamehewa marekebisho hayo yanapendekezwa yanalenga kuianisha masharti ya sheria hii na masharti ya sheria ya uwekezaji Tanzania ili kuboresha utekelezaji wa vivutio vinavyotolewa kwa uwekezaji. Vile vile sehemu hii inapendekeza kurekebisha jedwali la nne la sheria hii kwa kuongeza ushuru wa bidhaa kwenye mvinyo unaotokana na zao la zabibu unaoingizwa kutoka nje ya nchi kutoka shilingi 2466.45 kwa lita hadi shilingi 5600 kwa lita. Lengo la marekebisho haya yanayopendekezwa ni kuwezesha mvinyo unaozalishwa na zabibu zinazolimwa hapa nchini kuweza kushindana kwenye soko la ndani na mvinyo unaotoka nje ya nchi. Hii itasaidia kuhakikisha upatikanaji wa soko la zabibu zinazolimwa hapa nchini. Mheshimiwa Speaker, hivi sasa wakulima wa zabibu nchini hususan ni wakulima wa mkoa wa Dodoma wanashindwa kupata soko la uhakika kwa mazao ya, 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 ya kwa kuwa viwanda vya ndani vinazalisha mvinyo ambavyo ndio wanunuzi wakuu wa zabibu yao vinakosa soko la kuuza mvinyo wanaozalisha kutokana na ushindani wa mvinyo unaotoka nje ambao unauzwa kwa bei rahisi ikilinganishwa na mvinyo unaozalishwa hapa ndani ya nchi Mheshimiwa Speaker sehemu ya tatu ya mswada kama ilivyorekebishwa inapendekeza kurekebisha sheria ya kodi ya mapato sura namba 332 ambayo kifungu cha kumi kinarekebishwa ili kujumuisha wawekezaji mahiri ulioidhinishwa na kamati ya taifa ya uwekezaji katika wigo wa maeneo ambayo waziri mwenye dhamana ya masuala ya fedha anaweza kutoa msamaha wa kodi ya mapato lengo la marekebisho haya yanayopendekezwa ni kuianisha masharti ya sheria hii na masharti ya sheria ya uwekezaji Tanzania ili kuboresha utekelezaji wa vivutio vinavyotolewa kwa wawekezaji. Hata hivyo marekebisho yamefanyika katika mswada ili kubainisha kwamba serikali inafuta msamaha husika pindi itakapojidhihirisha kwamba msamaha husika au kutumika kama ilivyokusudiwa. Mheshimiwa Speaker, 
sehemu ya nne ya mswada kama ilivyo rekebisho inapendekeza kufanyia marekebisho katika kifungu namba 87 kifungu kidogo cha kwanza cha sheria ya madini sura namba 123 ili kupunguza kiwango cha mraba kwa malighafi za mbolea zinazochimbwa hapa nchini ambazo ni phosphate ore na limestone kutoka asilimia tatu hadi asilimia moja lengo la marekebisho haya ni kutoa nafuu kwa gharama za malighafi za wazalishaji wa ndani wa bidhaa za mbolea serikali ina imani kwamba unafuu huu unaotolewa kwa wazalishaji wa mbolea utaleta matokeo chanya kwenye upungu, upungu, upunguaji wa bei ya mbolea kwa wakulima na hivyo kupunguza mzigo kwa serikali katika utoaji wa fedha za ruzuku kwenye mbolea mheshimiwa speaker sehemu ya tano ya mswada kama ilivyofanywa marekebisho inapendekeza kufanya marekebisho katika kifungu cha nane cha sheria ushuru wa bidhaa na mafuta sura namba 220 ili kumpa waziri mamlaka ya kusamehe ushuru wa mafuta kwa miradi ya uwekezaji mahiri na mahiri maalum itakayoidhinishwa na kamati ya taifa ya uwekezaji lengo la marekebisho haya ni kuianisha masharti ya sheria hii na masharti ya sheria ya uwekezaji Tanzania ili kuwezesha utekelezaji wa vivutio vinavyotolewa kwa wawekezaji ili kuhakikisha kwamba mafuta yanayopewa msamaha hayatumiki vibaya hati za msamaha wa kodi zinazotolewa pamoja na mambo mengine zitabainisha muda wa kuanza na kumalizika kwa msamaha husika kiwango cha mafuta kinachopewa msamaha pamoja na, na mradi unaonufaika na msamaha vile vile serikali kupitia wizara ya fedha na mpango itaweka utaratibu wa kufanya ukaguzi wa mara kwa mara kwenye miradi husika kwa kushirikiana na mamlaka ya mapato Tanzania wizara ya viwanda na biashara na uwekezaji kituo cha uwekezaji Tanzania na wadau wengine wa serikali ili kuhakikisha kwamba mafuta husika yanatumika kama yalivyokusudiwa sehemu ya sita ya mswada kama ilivyorekebishwa inapendekeza kurekebisha Sheria ya kodi ya ongezeko la thamani sura na uwekezaji katika wigo na maeneo ambayo waziri mwenye dhamana ya masuala ya fedha anaweza kutoa msamaha wa kodi ya ongezeko la thamani lengo la ya kodi kwa uwekezaji pili ni kuongeza kifungu cha 55a kwa kutoza kodi ya ongezeko la thamani kwa kiwango cha sifuri kwa mbolea inayozalishwa ndani ya nchi ili kuleta unafuu kwa wakulima na watumiaji wa mbolea kwa kupunguza gharama za uzalishaji wa mbolea wa viwanda vinazozalishwa bidhaa hii hapa nchini hata hivyo unafuu unaotolewa kwa kipindi cha mwaka mmoja tu ili kutoa nafasi serikali kufanya tathmini na jiridhisha iwapo unafuu uliotolewa utawanufaisha utawa wakulima hususan kwa kupungua kwa bei ya mbolea inayozalishwa hapa nchini. Tatu inapendekezwa kurekebisha jedwali la kusamehe kodi ya ongezeko la thamani kwa magunia ya mkonge ya yanayotengenezwa nchini na yanayotambulika kwa HS code sifuri e, lengo la marekebisho haya ni kuwezesha magunia ya mkonge yanayozalishwa na, na viwanda vya ndani kushindana na magunia yanayoagizwa kutoka nje ya nchi hatua hii itasaidia kuchochea kilimo cha mkonge hapa nchini ajira kwa wananchi na kuongeza mapato ya serikali vile vile kufuatia majadiliano ya kina baina ya serikali na kamati ya bajeti inapendekezwa kupitia jedwali la marekebisho kuondoa pendekezo la kutoa msamaha kwa malighafi ya kutengeneza mitungi ya gesi inayotambulika kwa HH code sifuri na kutoa nafasi ya serikali kufanyia kazi zaidi mapendekezo husika ili kujiridhisha kwamba malighafi husika haiwezi kutumika kwenye matumizi mengine na hivyo kupoteza mapato ya serikali itimisho mheshimiwa speaker kufuatia maelezo haya naomba waheshimiwa wa bunge mujadili mswada huu na hatimaye mkubali kupitishwa kuwa sheria mheshimiwa speaker naomba kutoa hoja Waheshimiwa bunge hoja imeungwa mkono. Asanteni sana. Kabla sijamwita mwenyekiti wetu wa kamati kuja kuwasilisha, tunaye mgeni ambaye aliingia baada ya matangazo ya wageni kuwa yameshafanyika ama yameshatangazwa na huyu ni mgeni wa bunge ambaye ni mbunge mstaafu na kiongozi mkuu wa ACT Wazalendo, Mheshimiwa Azito Zubair Kabwe. Ndio amekaa upande gani niliambiwa ameingia huko ndani. Karibu sana. Waheshimiwa bunge sasa ni mwite mwenyekiti wa kamati yetu ya kudumu ya bunge ya budget mheshimiwa Daniel Siro Baran. Karibu sana. Mheshimiwa speaker kwa mujibu wa kanuni ya 99 fasila kwanza B 
ya kamili za kudumu za bunge ya la juni 2020 na wapo kutoa maoni na, na ushauri wa kamati ya kudumu ya bunge ya budget kuhusu msaada wa marekebisho sheria mbalimbali za fedha namba 13 wa mwaka 2022 ya yeah, the laws financial, financial provisions amendment act 2022 mheshimiwa speaker tarehe 19 september 2022 na hivi waziri wa fedha na mipango aliwasilisha bungeni wa pendekezo ya serikali kuhusu msaada wa mabadiliko ya sheria za fedha namba 13 na baada ya kuwasilisha msaada huo Mheshimiwa Speaker uliagiza kamati ya kudumu ya bunge ya budget kuchambua msaada huo ili baadaye maoni yake yawasilishwe bungeni. Uchambuzi wa msaada. Mheshimiwa Speaker, kamati inafanya uchambuzi wa msaada huu kwa kupitia kifungu kwa kifungu kwa madhumuni ya kujelimisha maudhui ya kila kifungu na kupendekeza marekebisho katika maeneo ambayo yanahitaji maboresho. Baada ya kujiridhisha na maudhui ya msaada tarehe 19 hadi 21 Septemba 2022, kamati ilifanya majadiliano ya kila na waziri wa fedha na mipango waziri wa kilimo naibu waziri wa uwekezaji viona na biashara pamoja na utendaji wa wizara aidha kamati pia ilikutana na wadau kwa ajili ya kupokea mapendekezo na maoni yao juu ya marekebisho yanayopendekezwa wadau leo fio kwenye kamati ni aliko vintage mheshimiwa speaker naomba taarifa yote ya kamati ingekuwa kumbukumbu rasmi za bunge yani hansard madhumuni ya mswada mheshimiwa speaker mswada huu una madhumuni makubwa matatu kama ifuatavyo moja ni kuchochea uzalishaji wa mbolea nchini ili zipatikane kwa bei nafuu pili kutoa vivutio maalum kwa miradi kimkakati na miradi mahiri ili kuchochea uwekezaji kwenye miradi mikubwa ili kuleta mapinduzi ya kiuchumi na tatu kuchochea uzalishaji wa ndani hasa wa bidhaa za magunia na mvinyo ili kuchochea kilimo cha mazao ya zabibu na katani mheshimiwa speaker kwa kutazama madhumuni haya ya mswada huo nitoe pongezi kwa mheshimiwa Samia Suluh Hassan rais wa jamhuri ya muungano wa Tanzania kwa kuonyesha nia ya dhati ya kuvutia wawekezaji na, na kutekeleza miradi mikubwa itakayoleta mapinduzi ya kiuchumi. Kamati naamini kwamba kwa mashati yaliyoko kwenye msaada huu, Mheshimiwa Rais atakuwa ameonyesha kwa vitendo na mna bora ya kutanzua vikwazo vitakavyokwamisha utekelezaji wa miradi ya kimkakati. Maoni ya kamati kuhusu msaada wa marekebisho ya sheria mbalimbali za fedha namba 13 wa mwaka 2022. Mheshimiwa Speaker Msaada huu unafanya mabadiliko katika sheria tano za kodi ambazo ni sheria ya ushuru wa bidhaa sura ya saba, sheria ya kodi ya mapato sura ya 332, sheria ya madini sura ya tatu, sheria ya ushuru wa mafuta sura ya shirini, na sheria ya kodi ya ongezeko la thamani yani VAT sura ya nane. Baada ya majadiliano ya kina baina ya kamati ya serikali, kamati ina maoni na pendekezo yafuatayo. Kuhusu sheria ya ushuru wa bidhaa sura ya saba. Mheshimiwa Speaker Serikali inapendekeza kurekebisha kifungu cha 128 ili kumpa mamlaka waziri mwenye dhamana na masuala ya fedha baada ya kupata idhini ya baadhi ya mawaziri kusamia ushuru kwenye bidhaa zitakazotumika katika utekelezaji wa miradi ya uwekezaji mahiri na ya kimkakati itakayoidhinishwa na kamati ya taifa ya uwekezaji yani INSK pamoja na kupandisha ushuru wa bidhaa za mvinyo kutoka kutoka nje kutoka shilingi 2,665,45 hadi shilingi 5,600 kwa lita ili kulinda wakulima wa ndani wa zao la zabibu. Mheshimiwa Speaker, kamati ilibaini kuwa nchi za jirani zinatoza kati ya shilingi 5,000 hadi 5,500 kwa lita ya mvunyo unaotoka nje. Hivyo hatua hii inahuisha inahuisha viwango vinavyotozwa katika nchi ya wanachama wa Afrika Mashariki. Aidha hatua hii inaleta usawa wa kiushindani kati ya wazalishaji wa zao la zabibu nchini dhidi ya mataifa mengine ambayo yameendelea sana katika uzalishaji wa zao hili. Hivyo kamati inakubaliana na pendekezo hili ambalo lina nia njema ya kusaidia na kuinua viwanda vya ndani na kuwa shindani. Hata hivyo kamati inashauri serikali kuhakikisha inasimamia ubora wa vinyo unaozalishwa ndani ya nchi pamoja na kuchochea kilimo cha aina mbalimbali za zabibu ili kuhakikisha kwamba malighafi hii muhimu kwa utengenezaji wa vinyo yanapatikana ndani ya nchi aidha kamati ilishauri serikali na serikali ilikubali kuweka sharti kwamba endapo msamaha utatumika kwa namna namna ambayo haijakusidiwa msamaha huo utarolewa na muhusika tarajiwa kulipa ushuru stahiki marekebisho haya yanaonekana ya kupitia jamii la marekebisho ya serikali Sheria ya kodi ya mapato sura ya 332. Mheshimiwa Speaker, kifungu cha kumi kinarekebishwa ili kujumuisha uwekezaji mahiri uliodhihirishwa na kamati ya taifa ya uwekezaji. Katika wigo wa maeneo ambayo waziri mwenye dhamana ya masuala ya fedha anaweza kutoa msamaha wa kodi ya mapato. Aidha mapendekezo haya yanabainisha kwamba misamaha ya kodi ya mapato itakayokuwa inatolewa kupitia mikataba mikataba ambayo serikali inaingia na kwa ndio itatumika wakati wa kukotoa kodi ya mapato. Mheshimiwa Speaker, hatua hii ina nia njema ya kutanzua mkwamo wa miradi ya mkakati ya wawekezaji mahiri. Uzoefu unaonyesha kuwa kuna baadhi ya wawekezaji mahiri wametumia mikataba yao vibaya kwa na kuhakikisha kwamba serikali haipati mapato yake inayostahili. 
aidha kama sisi na shauri serikali na serikali ilikubali kuweka sharti la kwamba endapo msamao utatumiwa kwa namna ambayo haijakusudiwa msamao huo utaondolewa marekebisho haya yanaonekana kupitia jedwali la marekebisho la serikali e, sheria ya madini sura ya 123 mheshimiwa speaker kifungu cha 87 kifungu cha kwanza kinarekebishwa ili kupunguza kiwango cha mrabaha kwa malighafi za mbolea zinazochimbwa hapa nchini kutoka asilimia tatu hadi asilimia moja kama tunyo kubaliana na mapendekezo ya serikali hata hivyo imeishauri serikali hatua hii iwe ya, ya mwaka mmoja ili kuangalia endapo inatimiza malengo yale yokusudiwa aidha kwa kuwa sekta ya mbolea imepata msamaha kwenye kodi ongezeko la thamani kwa kutozwa kwa, kwa kiwango cha asilimia sifuri na pili kupunguzia mrabaha ni vyema sasa serikali ikaweka utaratibu wa kupanga bei elekezi kwa mbolea inayozalishwa ndani ili kuhakikisha kwamba mbolea hii inamfikia mkulima kwa bei nafuu endapo swala la bei litaachiwa kwa kwa wamiliki wa viwanda ni wazi kwamba wana manufaa haya hata hayata mfikia mkulima na badala yake wazalishaji watajitengenezea faida ya kupindika yani super normal profit mheshimiwa speaker kama tele shauri serikali na ikakubali kuongeza madini ya chokaa yanayotumika kwa ajili ya kuzalisha mbolea na haya kutoza mrabaha wa asilimia moja ili pia viwanda vinavyotumia madini hayo na hivyo kunufaika na punguzo na punguzo hilo lengo la lengo la msingi ni kuongeza uzalishaji wa mbolea ndani ya nchi na kupunguza bei ya bei kwa wakulima sheria ya ushuru wa mafuta ya barabara Mheshimiwa Spika, kifungu cha nane kinarekebishwa ili kumpa waziri mamlaka ya kusamehe ushuru wa mafuta kwa miradi ya wawekezaji mahiri na mahiri maalum itakayodhihirishwa na kamati ya ya, ya NISC. Uzoefu unaonyesha kwamba kama kuna mmoja ya msamaha ambao umetumika vibaya ni msamaha wa ushuru wa mafuta. Hivyo kutokana na uzoefu huo, kamati na ishara serikali masuala yafuatayo. Kwanza kuwepo na muda maalum wa kusamehe ushuru kwenye mafuta baada ya mradi kukamilika pili kwa kuwa mfumo kuagiza mafuta ni wa pamoja lazima kuwe na namna ama kutofaulisha kwa vinasaba au uzaji wake ili kuondoa mwanya wa matumizi mabaya tatu kuweka mfumo wa msimamizi ili kuzuia mafuta yaliyokuwa yatumiwa kwa ajili ya miradi ya kutumika katika shughuli tofauti nne inashauriwa pia kwamba sharti la kuondoa msamaha lilopo katika kanuni za sheria hii litekeleze endapo itaonekana msamaha umetumika vibaya mheshimiwa speaker ushauri huu wa kamati ni kuhakikisha kwamba msamaha huu usije ukasababisha uuzaji holela wa mafuta hapa nchini yani dumping aidha kamati ile shauri serikali na serikali ilikubali kuweka sharti la kwamba endapo msamaha utatumika kwa namna ambayo haijakusudiwa msamaha huo utaondolewa na muhusika talazimika kulipa ushuru stahiki marekebisho hayo yanaonekana kupitia jedwali la, serik la marekebisho ya serikali sheria ya kodi ya ongezeko la thamani yani VAT mheshimiwa speaker kifungu cha sekta kinafanyiwa marekebisho ili kujumuisha wawekezaji mahiri ulioidhinishwa na kamati ya kitaifa ya wawekezaji ambapo waziri mwenye, mwenye dhamana ya masuala ya fedha anaweza kutoa msamaha wa kodi ongezeko la thamani aidha kuongeza kifungu kipya cha 55a kwa kutoza kodi ongezeko la thamani kwa kiwango cha sifuri kwa mbolea inayozalishwa ndani ya nchi ili kuleta unafuu kwa wakulima na utimiaji wa mbolea vile vile kurekebisha jadwali jadwali ili kusamehe kodi ongezeko la thamani kwa magunia ya mkonge yanayotengenezwa hapa nchini ile tambiliko kwa HS code 6305.00.00 na malighafi yanayotambuliwa kwa chini ya HS code 7225.00.00 ambayo hutumika kutengenezea mitungi ya gesi mheshimiwa speaker kama sisi nakubaliana na, na, na serikali kwa mabadiliko ya sheria katika sheria hii kwa lengo la kupunguza bei ya magunia yanayozalishwa yanayozalishwa ndani hata hivyo ili shauri serikali na serikali kukubali kuweka ukomo wa mwaka mmoja ili kuangalia endapo msamaha huo unaleta manufaa yanayokusudiwa aidha kama ile shauri kwamba kuhusu msamaha wa malighafi za kuzalisha mitungi ya gesi usitolewe katika kipindi hiki kwa sababu utaathiri mapato ya serikali serikali ilikubali mpendekezo hilo la kamati na ibara ya 15b ya mswada iliondolewa kama inavyoonekana kwenye jeneral la marekebisho la serikali maoni na pendekezo ya jumla mheshimiwa speaker Masuala mengine yaliyojadiliwa katika kamati wakati wa kupisha mswada wa sheria fedha ni kama yafuatavyo. Kufanya tathmini na utafiti ya faida na hasara ya msamaha ya kodi ambayo inatolewa na serikali. Mheshimiwa speaker, kamati na shauri serikali kuhakikisha kuwa inajiridhisha na msamaha ya kodi pamoja na vivutio vingine vinavyolenga kuvutia wawekezaji nchini. Kujiridhisha kwa hatua hizo ni kuhakikisha kuwa inaleta matokeo tarajiwa na sio kuipotezea serikali mapato. Aidha kuwepo na usimamizi mzuri wa misamaha inayotolewa na serikali kwa wawekezaji mahiri pamoja na kimkakati. Misamaha ya kodi kwa pato la taifa, yani tax exemption against GDP. Mheshimiwa speaker, misamaha ya kodi ni hatua ya, ya sera za mapato ambayo huwa na malengo mbalimbali kama vile kuchochea uzalishaji, kupunguza gharama za huduma au bidhaa, kugawanya rasilimali na kuchochea ukwaji wa sekta. 
Hata hivyo, malengo tuwejiwekea katika mpango wa miaka mitano, misama haitakui kuzidi ya silimia moja ya pato la taifa. Hivyo ni wakaji sasa kwa serikali kufanya tathmini ya kina ya misama yote ya kweli lotelewa na kuona endapo ya misama hiyo imefikia malengo ya loko Serikali ukimaisha vitengo vya utafiti wa sera za mapato ili ukiwezesha serikali kuwa na taarifa za uhakika pindi inapo andaa sera za mapato. Mwishmiwa speaker, kuna haja ya msingi ya ukimaisha vitengo vya utafiti wa sera za mapato na hasa kodi kwa kubitengea rasimali watu na fedha za kutosha ili vitengeleze majukumu yake ikamilifu. Kamati na amini, mabaliko inawafanya mara kwa mara katika sheria za kodi ni kutokana na kutokuwa na utafiti wa kutosha wa kina katika sera za mapato. Itimisho. Mwishima speaker, naamba kutumia fursa hii kwanza kukushukuru wewe mwishima speaker. Hukunibe fursa hii ili niweze kukwasilisha maoni ya kamati kuhusu msawada wa mabaliko ya sheria za fedha na matatu, kumina tatu wa mwaka fina shinambili, mbele ya bungila kutukufu. Pili mshukuru mwishima Musa Azan Zungu, mbunge naibu speaker kwa ushikano wake. Aida na pende kumshukuru mshukuru mwishmiwa Dr. Miguru Lameki Nchemba, mbunge ya wazira fedha la mipango, mwishmiwa Hassan Chande, mbunge na hibu wazira fedha la mipango, mwishmiwa Hussein Bashe, mbunge ya wazira wa kilimo, mwishmiwa ya Gizawud Kigahe, mbunge na hibu wazira wa wekezaji vyanda biyashara, ofisi ya mwana shere mkua serikali, ofisi ya wandishi wa shere wa mbunge kwa ushikani wa wakakamati. Aida na pende kwa shukuru wa tenaji wote wa wazira fedha la mipango, na ofisi ya mwana shere mkua serikali kwa maona wa shawari wao, Ule wezesha kamati kuchambua msaada huu hadi kufikia hatuwa hii. Mwishima speaker, napenda kumshukuru mwishmiwa wa mari kigua, makamu wa nyekitu wa kamati ya budget, na vile vile napenda kuwa shukuru wa jumbe wa kamati ya budget, kwa umakini, umahiri, na uvumilivu wawo katika kibinchocha uchambuza msaada huu. Hasa ugezingatia kwa mba muda haukua rafiki sana. Na mba uradha yao ya majina ya ujumbe hao, jangia katika kumukumu rasmi za bunge, yaani Hansad. Mwishima speaker, Kwa namna ya peke na mbo ni kumshukuru katibu wa bunge binenelo wa muhambi NDC Pamuja na watendaji wote wa ofisi ya bunge kwa yuwezisha kamati kutekeza mojukumu yake ipasavi Aitha na pere kumshukuru sekretari ya kamati ya budget kiongoze na dogo maiko kadebe Ambele mkugwezi wa idara ya budget kwa kuratibu shuza kamati Pamuja na kutuwa ushauri wa kitalam na atimaya ukamilika kwa tarifu hii kwa wakati Mwishmi ya speaker na mbo kuwasilisha na naunga mkono hoja Asante uh, sana mwenyekiti wa kamati ya budget kwa kutupa uh, mwelekeo wa namna kamati ilivyofanya kazi kwenye mswada huu. Mheshimiwa bunge nayo orodha hapa ya wabunge ambao wameomba kuchangia kwenye hoja hii. Uh, tutaanza na mheshimiwa Joseph George Kakunda, mheshimiwa Jonas Mbunda, atafuatiwa na mheshimiwa Dr. Charles Stephen Kimei. Mwishimiwa wa speaker na kushukuru sana kwa nafasi ya kuwa mchangiaji wa kwanza kwenye huu mswada. Mimi jambo la kwanza, kwanza ni pongezi sana serikali. Kwa kuja na mapendekezo ambayo yatakwenda kusaidia sana kuburesha maeneo ambayo kweli ya likuwa na matatizo. Hizi sheria tano zinozekebishwa zilikuwa yale maeneo ya norekebisho ya likuwa ya naleta matatizo ya kuchelewesha asa, ata, asa ba, baadhi ya miradi na kuchelewesha wekezaji na, ku, na, ku, na kuathiri hasa hasa eneo la wakulima mwishima speaker tunawa miradi mikubwa ya kimkakati ya wekezaji mahiri imechelewa kwa muda mrefu Mradi kama liganga na mchuchuma Na miradi mingine ya ina hiyo Kama hii miradi ya mbote nenda kuzungumza kusu jenzi wa bandari ya bagamoyo Ina ile mionti kama hizo Na hisi kwamba sheria hii marekebisho haya hasa kwenye eno hilo Ya mechelewa sana na ya metuchelewesha kweli kweli kupata Faida kubwa kutokana uwekezaji kwenye miradi hii mikubwa Una sheria ya uwekezaji nzuri imeweka utatibu mzuri tunakwenda kwenye 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 baraza la ushauri ile la, 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 la wekezaji chini ya chini ya waziri mkuu mwenyewe kabisa na mawaziri ni wajumbe lakini wakitoa maamuzi au ushauri au mapendekezo waziri wa fedha alikuwa anakosa 
eh, power ya kuweza kutekeleza mapendekezo ambayo yametoka kwenye NISC. Kwa hiyo mheshimiwa mheshimiwa uh, speaker marekebisho ambayo yanakuja kupitia marekebisho haya yanakwenda kumpa nguvu sasa waziri wa fedha eh, baada ya approve ya baraza ili aweze kutekeleza mapendekezo ya ya, ya, ya baraza la la uwekezaji chini ya ofisi ya waziri mkuu. Kwa hiyo mimi nilikuwa napenda kuwashawishi wenzangu kwamba tukubali bunge likubali marekebisho haya ili kuweza kuisaidia nchi kutekeleza miradi mikubwa ambayo ina faida kubwa kwa nchi. Nipongeze sana nipongeze sana kile kipengele ambacho kimewekwa cha kuweka angalizo ili hawa watakaopewa misamaha wasitumie vibaya. Hiyo na, napenda kuiomba serikali iwe macho ili hawa ndugu zetu ambao watakuwa wamepewa misamaha basi waitumie vizuri misamaha hiyo kwa mujibu wa sheria. Jambo la pili mheshimiwa speaker kumekuwa na kilio cha siku nyingi sana 